What's happening everybody and welcome to the True Gamer Podcast, the podcast hosted by two of your gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How's it going, bro? Going good. How's it going, man? It's going great. We had a little bit of a recording session and uh, we're just barely holding it all together right here. But yeah, uh, but yeah we're going we're gonna to do things and whatnot. Um, yeah, today is going to be quite kind of a special episode. We've got a lot of things to talk about, but more importantly... We've got a bro. We've got one of our one of our best bros because he's more popular than us, and maybe he can help us out. You know them. True, <laughs> true. true. But <laughs> our bro, Walshy, my man, how's it going? I'm all right, mate. I'm a uh, hate to kill me a bit, but I'm uh, I'm right. How are you? Mate, we're all in the UK just melting together over here, yeah. aren't we? It's fucking insane. <laughs> we, me and Sheps just did a recording session, and we had what literally, I've got two AC units in my house. One of them stopped working halfway through our recording it session. It got we're too like, hot. Yeah. It got too hot for even the AC unit to handle. And I know I'm saying AC a lot, and Walshy's probably going, Assassin's Creed? Yeah. What? Th- what? This is bringing out some repressed memories. This is- <laughs> yeah. We have an Ezio and an Altair moment uh, unit, so that's what we're doing. Um, Before we get too far into the podcast, this podcast is brought to you by our amazing patrons over on patreon.com forward slash conversations. Who do we have to thank? We have Jeremy Renner, Diogo Dildos, Dan the Man, Record Friction, Catsper the Friendly Patron, Jack the Jackal, Isak the Ultimate, Kuba Kuba, and Cam- Comrade Conrad. Thank you, bro, so much for keeping the lights, the mics on, and the gaming going here. Conversations. Yeah. That's right, you guys are super bros. You're awesome. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a, a jam-packed episode. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. Main thing that we're going to be talking about is, of course, Cyberpunk Night City Wire. That happened, like, yesterday. Yeah. There's a lot of cool games gameplay shown off there a lot of cool stuff um well, go before on. we get into that i mean yeah. walshi are you into good games or just assassin's creed yeah fair uh, question fair question it's, it, the fact i've spent the last six months talking about assassin's creed non-stop sort of answers your question there <laughs> so, um, no, no he's not yeah, okay we get it yeah we matter. understand completely <laughs> 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 there's somewhere uh, james and tyler their ears are exploding they're like ah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no but how do you how do you feel about about i mean you've only made you haven't been starting your had your channel for too too long uh, and you've been doing the ac content and whatnot but have you started to wear thin or is it like bro this is actually i love this this is amazing i love it uh, i kind of started thin to be honest yeah uh, it's 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 all right and it? it's it's always a little like all doing not dull but like doing the same thing again and again it's a bit you know, like, I'm thinking of doing some stuff on The Last of Us, but it's okay, really. Like, as much as it's doing the same thing, it's... I still enjoy Assassin's Creed a lot. It's something that, like, I know a fair bit about. It's, mm. it's alright, really. I'd like to do some more stuff in future, but for now, it's, it's alright. How do you it find, like, through. the creative process? Do you like... Do you find it a good, like, creative outlet making these videos? Or is it just something that you want to kind of... It's almost like you were doing... If you were a science teacher, you'd be doing, like, a... You know, when you need to look up something online... Yeah. And you, you find that one Indian guy that's explaining mitosis or something. Is it more like yeah, that? Yeah. Or is it more like, you know, your art? It's, and those guys are the only reasons I'll pass my GCSE. So you can True. stop <laughs> slagging those <laughs> off, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it really depends what I'm doing. Because, like, some of this stuff, it's like, okay, I kind of have to do a video, I'll do this. And I've done, like, one last week where it was, like, talking about the trailers. And it's stuff like that. Where it's like it's a longer type of thing, it's it's not something I can do every two or three days. Yeah. I enjoy doing that like a lot more. Sort of thing. I like to do more stuff like that, more review type stuff, video essay type stuff. Yeah, it's all right, really. No, oh, lovely, lovely. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, I mean, there's probably a lot more people that know you than they know us. I mean, that's proven by numbers <laughs> on your your YouTube channel and whatnot. You're but, exploding, um, man, and it's it's well deserved and. That's exactly. the power of, of well, focusing on one area. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's probably it. Focusing on one thing, YouTube really likes that. But for those of you guys that don't know, Walshy is a great creator. He does focus on a lot of Assassin's Creed content. If you're excited for Assassin's Creed, Valhalla coming up, you want to know more about it, want to get the information as and when it releases, you guys should head over to his channel. Link will be in the description for you guys or in the show notes if you're listening on podcast services. And not, Definitely not go e check him out. Not even just that stuff. Like This guy will rate the top 10 grasses found in Assassin's Creed. Well, yes. Five best shacks. Across, uh -huh. yeah. you know, the, the original Ezio trilogy. Uh, this all guy the apples rank. of Eden. It's just right. all of them. <laughs> He'll do just yeah, about there is anything. There nothing I won't talk about. Exactly. <laughs> he, he's basically shameless because he's a true gamer. And talking of true gamers. Yes. Those of you that support us for the $5 tier on our Patreon are in fact true gamers. And I'm guessing Ed doesn't have the list ready. No, I actually do for once. It's what? actually amazing. No way. This is unprecedented times. It's 2020. Everything's fucked up. Um, uh, our <laughs> true gamers are Jeremy Hoare, Diogo, Dan, Record Friction, uh, Keralt of Rivia, aka Cats Bacoral, uh, <laughs> Max H, Adam Sunling, Benedict Clobbers, Fishy, Real Cinema, and Hawkins, aka H Barts 12, Zahir. Isak Manny, Ditlotic, our oh boy, he's new new patron as well. Very cool to have yeah, him. Buddy. And a yes. bitter biting <coughs> sorry, I had to swallow there. A bitter biting bitten, bit a better brother bitten, and the bitter better bitten bit the bitter bit biter back. <laughs> I, Mate, I, I just I read those words. <laughs> Every, the thing is, every week it changes, so there's no point. I'll practice it. I'll be like, cool, I nailed it for this week. Next week, something completely different. I have to admire the, uh, the skill to come up with a new one every single week. It's yeah. actually really cool. Anyway, thank you, bros, all our true gamers out there for supporting you. us. We really, really do appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. And uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, well, I'm saying we'll see you guys if we're ending the podcast. Guys, we're ending the podcast. We'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we've got a couple of stories to talk about. There's a few, uh, there's yeah. Ghost of Shima talk we've got going on here. We do have a little bit of AC Valhalla talk as well. Well, she's ears yes. peeking peek right there. She's there we, go. <laughs> we was like, we need a professional. We need, <laughs> we need someone who's like a pillar of the community. Nah, fuck those guys. No, no, no. We're going for Walshi. That's who we're going for right there. But you can um, get. My, we couldn't get them unfortunately so we went for the second uh marvel avengers talk as well and, and of course cyberpunk 2077 let's start of off course. with cyberpunk first of all we saw that uh night city wire reveal yesterday apparently it's episode one of many episodes that are going to be coming out until the game launches in november it did get delayed since we last spoke from september to november um, there's this meme going around that they every time we approach 91 days remaining for Cyberpunk, they seem to delay it. It's happened twice now. So I'm going to be waiting by the clock. As soon as it goes like 91 days, I'm like, all right, so when's that delay coming in? When's that delay right. coming in for Cyberpunk? But how did you guys feel anyway? How did Will you she? feel? Will she? Uh, I'll be honest. I haven't seen it. Oh my god! No. Hold on a second. First of all, you didn't watch the stream, and also you didn't watch our reaction stream to it. No. Uh, just, just in post, like just drop his fucking audio to zero. Yeah, and, one and second. We'll, I'm just gonna yeah. uh, drop that right there. We don't. We don't do, let me ask. Did guy. you play The Witcher? The Witcher Three? Yeah, yeah, I did. And you have the correct opinion, or are you wrong? <laughs> oh, is this Triss or Yen? Well, well, that's also one of them. That answers but... the original question, because of course you went there. So now you, that means you know the game. Clearly, if you know it, you enjoyed it. Who yeah, did you romance? Uh, Yen. Well, there's no, there's no other option, really. How many times have you played the game? I think two. I started another playthrough, and it, like, bricked my PS4. Oh, Jesus! It, no, fucking it, hell! <laughs> that thing where you have to, like, rebuild the database. It was that a ton uh, for me. I don't I've know why. That. I've had that before, but it survived, yeah. Well, it, it survived for me, but I thought it hadn't. So I bought a new PS4 oh, and no. realised almost instantly, like it it didn't matter. So a bit bit oh. of an L for me. That sucks. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, this is the way you do it. The first time you play it, you have to do Yen because like it's the way the story is kind of designed from the books and stuff. Then mm. you do it properly in your romance, Tris, because she's the real romance. So mm. anyway, moving on. Why didn't you watch this thing about cyberpunk? Do you just like not like good things in your life? Or? No, I see. Well, we, we covered that in the beginning. We said he doesn't like good games. We, oh, yeah. Just right, an AC right. guy. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. Right. Go on, explain yourself. 
Expl- yeah. Explain yourself. <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just busy. Like I've seen a bit of it. Um, I know like Holly Bennett was there. It's supposed to be like an anime or something now. Yeah, yeah. Well, after... They announced it. Was it Speedrunners? I think it was called or ne- mm. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They announced an anime for it, which was was cool for for anime weebs like Sheps over here. Yeah. He was very much like, yes, there's an anime of it. I was like, yes, okay, Mushi. let's move on. Let's move anime, on. <laughs> yay or nay? I'm sort of like an anime normie because I've only watched Death Note. Close enough. You watched you watched really an- shit. you watched it before. Like you've done Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, and Death Note. That's one actual anime. Cool, you're a weeb. You're in. God damn so it! I'm outnumbered. outnumbered you I'm outnumbered. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, okay, so you didn't see it. Like you're busy. Fine. Are you going to catch up on it, or do you not? It's not really yeah, something you're invested sure. in. I'll, okay. I'll probably watch it after because Cyberpunk. It's it's one of those games that like since like ages ago we knew it was going to be like one of the best games of the year. It's CD yeah. Projekt Red and all that. Mm. They've delayed it twice, and that's always the sign of like it, they've got big ambitions. It's going to be like really good. So I'll definitely have to catch up on it. So just I, before uh, we get to, so go on, go on. Gone, bro. I was just going to say just before we get to the uh, the what we think about the uh, the the what Night City Wire, what they've shown off. Apparently, there is a very loose rumor at the moment that they might have delayed Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven to add a VR mode to the game. What? Now. There's two two things I've got to say with that. One, I would be really excited to play it in VR as well. It would be kind of weird to walk around and play VR. It's, it's a little bit disorientating. But allow delaying the whole game for everybody else to yeah. satisfy the, the one million VR users. <laughs> <laughs> That's bullshit. That should come That's as an update. Shit. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like a patch later or something yeah, like that. Yeah, for sure. Jesus. And I'm a VR guy as well. Like I. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't just think this is game of the year i think cyberpunk is contender for game of the decade and i mean like 2020 to 2030 and it may like don't get me wrong it might come out and be better than god of war and all that stuff but for this decade i think it might be the game and Mm. i think it's coming out you know in the first year of it thoughts do you know what i think you're right i think it could be i think it could be this could be this is the level of game that at least Cyber, uh, sorry, uh, CD Projekt Red are are pitching to us. They they seem to be gearing up. They don't. They never like try and temper expectations. They're like, no, we're building something incredible. It's going to yeah. be massive. It's going to mm. be big, and they. Everyone seems to be. There are some people that are over hyping it and they're overdoing it. They're like, oh. I'm going to be able to customize my my cars and, and my motorbikes. And, and in it, they, when they hear customize your genitals, they're like, well, everything's customizable. I'm going to get to hu- customize the follicles of the hairs on my arms right. and stuff like can, that. Can I customize if it hangs left or right, you know? <laughs> so I did watch a, a video from um, Alana Pierce. She's like a, an ex-IGN employee. Now she's working at Funhouse and stuff like that. She said that apparently in the version that she was playing, which a couple of people got to play the game, early for like four or five hours um there's a slider for both chest size for the girls and dick size for the guys and i was like apparently it was grayed out so she couldn't adjust it but man i'm i That's cannot not wait nearly enough customization i want <laughs> angle of the dangle i want if it hangs left or right girth bull size a twist ratio left to right which hangs lower <laughs> all that stuff there we Washington. go, there we go. Where do you think uh, this game's going to rank, like, this year? And, like, I mean, I, that's a pretty big co- comment from me, the game of the decade. But what's your thoughts? What are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, like, for game of the decade, there is potentially an Assassin's Creed games this decade, so I can't really, I can't really agree with you on that <laughs> Here one. Here we right. go, here we <laughs> go. <laughs> on, a, on a serious note, I think it'll be incredible. Like, this year, yeah. it's got... If this was last year, I think it'd easily be game of the year because last year was a bit quiet this year it sort of got last of us two um ghost it's got like those to go against like the the rest of the decade Mm -hmm. we don't know i think like to be fair red dead one like mario galaxy 2 from like the start of last decade still stand out as two of the best from last of us one man of culture right here man of culture yeah i mean there's there's some really incredible games we've been very lucky as gamers for sure Especially mm. recently, it's like the golden uh, age of games right now. From like ships, yeah, go on. 
I was going to say, your your comment about Game of the Decade, possibly, that's a lofty, lofty prediction. Because it's I at the beginning agree. of the decade as well. We've, so seen, <laughs> we've seen almost nothing. Plus, this year, it's got... An, fair enough, I haven't played The Last of Us 2 yet. Mm -hmm. But it's going up against, just this year, The Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, um, uh, AC Marvel Valhalla. Avengers. Uh, uh, Marvel Avengers, exactly. There's the, um, <laughs> the Fast and Furious game. You oh, know, Fast Forza and Furious Crossroad, yeah! Well. <laughs> right, so, um, but I, I just, I don't know, something about it. I think if it's, if it's even half of what they're saying, I think it could be a contender. If it's more than half of what we've been led to believe, unless they make another one, mm -hmm. you know, another game, I, I think it really could be it before because I know we have to talk about um, this stuff before but we have an AC YouTuber I'm genuinely curious because I haven't because I don't watch your content because I'm not a pleb no not really uh, oh, I shit. actually do watch your videos <laughs> um, <laughs> I how do you feel about Vikings for AC I'm really genuinely curious did you because I know a lot of people had said like um, you know Egypt Rome it's you know all these places mm -hmm. um how do you feel about how do you feel about this? and Japan? That was a big one, but of course, yeah. of course, Ghost is AC in Japan, but better. Um, what what do you think about taking the Vikings? Because I was super shocked, and I'm not really even an AC gamer. How do you feel about it? Well, like I don't think anyone. It's like the leaks. Everyone thought it was Rome because like yeah. there was a leak that said we'll get Egypt, we'll get Greece, and then we got those two, and there were some other details mm -hmm. lined up. But everyone thought Rome. And obviously, Vikings was a huge deal, and a lot of people took issue with that because, like, the reputation of Vikings isn't good, and people are like, how how are you going to be a hero when you're doing like all this shit? Yeah. I like I like kind of the angle they're taking of it, where it's like they're not all bad. The series, it's best for me when it takes on more like philosophical things and not like presenting things as just being UD. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty cool. I think there's I think some issues with the setting a little bit because, like. Are cool and that kind of thing. It's been like bad for a few years, but like in somewhere like England in like the Middle Ages, I don't think there's much you can do with that. But Agreed. besides that, I think it's quite cool. Yeah. All right, good. I'm as someone that knows the franchise pretty well. That's mm. you. Um, I, it's it's good to see that you think that you know they that Ubisoft aren't any good at optimizing because the games are enormous, mm. but. I think, yeah, it's good to know that they're, the team, when it comes to at least making the game, can... Uh... All right, cool, cool. That's that's good news. That's good news. Yeah. Walshi, have you uh, <clears throat> looked to... You know Sif in the community. Yeah, uh, I don't. <laughs> how, have you looked to him for guidance on how to get the attention of the guys at um, Ubisoft, especially Darby McDevitt? Because I saw a tweet the other day, and um, uh, Sif had... A, a, a mention from Darby McDevitt himself using his yeah. actual name. Like, he actually called right, him yeah. Sif. Has he ever called you Walshy? Has he ever done that? Um, well, the thing is, I have looked to Sif the guidance. He's actually pulling the strings on all this. Oh, is he? Is um, he actually yeah. the puppet master behind the whole of your channel? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, I, I am Sif, actually. God, I like... knew it. I knew it, guys. <laughs> I knew it. This is why I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I don't really mind. Like, my dream used to be, I used to have, like, an image in my head a few months ago of, like, something I would love to do. It hasn't aged well at all. Okay. Sit down and interview Ashraf Ismail for a Ooh. new Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And obviously, well, that's a bit, Aged you know. like milk. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit. That was one of the things I was going to bring up. I don't want to go too deep into it because here we like to keep things like nice and light and happy and yeah. stuff like that and talk about a good game and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. probably not AC Valhalla, you know. Just saying. Um, <laughs> I, I was giving him shit before it was cool. So you know. It's true. It's true. Uh, you, you saw he was a bad egg and you was like, fuck it. I'm going after him. I'm going after him. And everyone tried to defend him. But there that's you go. how it happened. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ashraf did. Uh, he took first of all, he took himself off of AC Valhalla, even though the mm. game was probably done. And it's, you know, it, or at least in the polishing stages at, right now. So he wasn't really needed. And then he up and deletes his Twitter altogether. So... Yeah. There's no way for you to even contact him unless you get in contact with the girl he was with and then you can maybe get his phone number and then you can and then maybe you can get in contact with him if you want. But but yeah, that's a big thing that happened in the community. I don't think I want to at this point. It's a bit 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of tainted mm, now, isn't it? It's kind of tainted. Yeah. Don't worry, man. They'll always look. Either when I was younger, all I wanted to do was uh, interview Mila Kunis. I mean, I still do. I still do. But oh, typical, typical conversations kept fashion right here. We got a fire alarm in the background. Also, does someone stand right next to the fire alarm to to turn it off? Because that was fairly quick. <laughs> yeah, I think I think maybe the flat complex is a different contract. People come around and test everything and do something. I think. Uh, okay. But have you noticed it's always at different times and only yeah. when we're recording? Yeah, because we don't we don't stick to like a all right five o'clock we have to do this right now. Yeah. It's different times all the time. <laughs> and often we record on a Thursday. Yes, that's true. That's so, true. And this is a time different time as well. And it didn't so happen strange. Yesterday. Anyway, anyway, moving on. Anyway, um, so back to cyberpunk, the original topic we were talking about. Um, I wanted to bring up something that people haven't actually noticed, and well, I haven't seen many people talk about it. Usually when we see faces of game characters, specifically in things like, like Marvel Avengers or something like that, um, there's an uncanny valley, right? Where like you look at their face and you're like, okay, we know this is a video game because it's just not realistic. It's just not real. Like hair doesn't flow properly or the, the lighting on the face is wrong. The, the, the dimples in the cheeks and whatnot, they're just not right. It's really subtle things that CG doesn't work for. Like it's very exactly. difficult to get these models to walk properly. That's why they've gone always use mocap because uh -huh. computers just can't get it. Like the weight shift and faces and hair in particular. Yeah, you just nailed it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. In Cyberpunk 2077, the the trait sorry the Night City Wire thing that we saw the other day, that was something that stood out to me the most. I looked at the faces, especially that um I can't remember what her name is. It's the that chick one chick that was, you're in love with, yeah. Oh, she's good. I swear to God, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna romance her. I'll tell you that. I'll put her up <laughs> on the screen so people can see in the in the video version. But her face looked so great and it looked so realistic and her hair laid perfectly. I was like, wow, this is they've nailed something amazing here where the people don't look distracting. They look probably adds to the whole immersion as well of the game, which something I didn't a lot of people didn't notice. It looks pretty great. Yeah. Gotta be honest. Gotta something I no sorry, brother. I, no no go on. You go. Go go. Something I noticed that I think a lot of other people didn't notice as well. When uh, you get shot, when V gets shot, and then um, we see Johnny Silverhand, V's moving his hands in the exact same way Johnny Silverhand was yeah. when he was seeing him. And I'm, wor I'm wondering if we don't find that we're missing time and Johnny Silverhand's taking us for a ride, like physically using our body at times. People um, jacking you, basically. Yeah, 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 which I don't think anyone else seems to have noticed. And I, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it's something that I thought I noticed. So Yeah, no, it's possible. It's totally possible. I mean, he's an AI inside your head, right? I mean, he does save you and bring you back to life if you like, if your system shuts down. That's what the whole chip is supposed to exactly. be. Exactly. But it's totally possible that it fits with the narrative that he like takes over your body and just goes like rampaging. That'd be quite cool. That'd be quite cool. I hope Keanu Reeves' character is a lot more prevalent than... So there are other YouTubers as well that have got parts in the game. And I think it was... I can't remember who it was. Somebody asked me on Twitter. They were like, how do you feel about this? And I was like, as long as it's not intrusive, I'm just going to treat them as a normal person. As a person who, who got the job and, and did some mocap and some voice acting, right? But if they act like a like a youtuber does sometimes flamboyant you know how Walshy does in his videos where he's yeah. like all right Hate guys guy. here we are for our top <laughs> 10 so. apples of eden and whatnot <laughs> we're gonna okay we're so gonna... so today guys we're actually going to be talking about the best five shoes you can customize in assassin's creed 3 yes yes there you, we go you guess my next video that's there Amazing. we go. You heard it here first, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if they're like that, then it will be distracting. But if they're just like, you know, their voice is in it, they've been given good direction, and they won't, they're not allowed to be cunts, then it will be like, yeah, fine, what's the point? You know, they're just ordinary people. But I hope Keanu Reeves has a really good point, really good um, uh, character in the, in the game. Because th that's one of the reasons probably why a lot of people are buying it. They're like... Shit, Keanu Reeves I mean, is in it? Well, I gotta play this game. I would get it even who wasn't in it. I'm just gonna say, I, on the YouTube <laughs> thing. Yeah. And Walshi, let me know what you think about this. I'm a little bit concerned because, unlike Keanu Reeves, who's an incredible actor and got it because he's an incredible actor and very famous, these guys got it because they're famous, right? I doubt these yeah. guys have to try out for their acting ability. They just were sort of given it to be in it. Like, is I it doubt they had to audition, you know? 
Yeah. Go on, Walshy, let, let us know. What do you yeah. think about them? What do you think about that? I think it depends, like, recognisable they are. Because I thought that about, um, what's it, Dunkirk? Because, like, Harry Styles was in that. Oh, like, yeah. He's, he's really good. But, like, if, if they're super recognisable people, that's going to, like, take me out of it a bit. Like, Death Stranding, mm -hmm. you had, um, Conan O'Brien like the director of Shape of Water, whatever his name is. And that was weird to me because they're really recognisable as like other people. If I know them and like they act, if I don't know them and like they act well enough, don't think it'll be too weird for me, I don't think. Yeah. I um, I think that I trust CD Projekt Red because I don't think they would have just approached, like you said, Chips, like you said because they're in there because they're famous. I don't think they would have approached them for that. Surely not, right? I know that they have they need this game to be a success because they put so much investment in it both from the Polish government and themselves and they've got their name riding on this and if they can make this a success they've pretty much guaranteed the next game to be a success or any future games that they have and whatnot. Um, but I don't think they would just put people in just because they're famous. This is CD Projekt Red at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. I, th I think as long as they will have looked at it and gone, yeah, it's at least good enough. Yeah. And it probably adds something to have them in there, like a, some je ne sais quoi, this totally different aspect to Wait. it. Okay, cool. I think they would have, if it was garbage, they just wouldn't have used it. Yeah. So, I, okay, yeah. fair enough. Oh, God, guys. Oh, so, when the um, when the Night City Wire happened, they they showed off some pictures of the room where they were where they allowed some people to play in Poland and want to play the game. And they had secret lab chairs, the chair that I have, you know, the, the cool one I have, yeah, Sheps. Yeah, yeah. But they had cyberpunk branded ones. And I was oh, like, shit. oh, oh Your my chair's God. useless now. Just burn it and get oh. the cyberpunk one. And they haven't announced it yet, but then I, at the time, anyway, they were like, oh, God, I know they're going to announce this. I just got an email right now saying that they've they've announced it. And it looks gorgeous. It looks so good. But it's very, very expensive. Very How expensive. very expensive? Well, t take, a, take a stab. Take a stab in the dark. I don't know. Both of you. Go on, Walsh. You take a stab as well. Uh, I don't know what's expensive for a game in chair. Like, what would you pay for a game quid? In chair? How much, sorry? Uh, 200 quid maybe a little higher a little higher a little i reckon higher. it's more than we expect the ps5 to be Ooh. <laughs> i reckon it i wouldn't be shocked if it starts with a five or a six Ooh. it's it's less than that it's less than okay. that but it's good. that's still, good it's 429 pounds Oof. jesus Whew, and and guess what? It's out of stock already. Oh shit! <laughs> I mean, it's just like, especially the timing's so poor because you've got a new console to save up for, plus Cyberpunk. Yeah, plus Ghost, this is the worst the timing Arsenal. ever. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The thing well, maybe is, maybe we're I... just all too poor. Uh, no, you know what it is. That is what it is. Uh, Walshy, uh, have you ever thought about just acquiring more money? Yeah, just don't be poor, bro. If you just That's not a be show, poor, actually. just get some money. Wait. Just go out and get some money, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. That's, Where's the light? Do that. Thank you. Where's the light? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome for that pro tip right there. Um, there was one other thing that they showed off in this uh, in this call that like, demo, as, as well as like the car to car combat and the the quest lines they showed and and the act, voice acting and stuff like that. It was this thing called Brain Dance. So. It's like a, the best way that I can describe it and the way that we described it on the stream was that there was this detective mode that you could mm -hmm. view the memories of a specific person who has this brain dance chip implanted already in their head and you see everything from their their vision and you can also like zoom out sort of like third person-ish and like free roam the, the area and you can access certain things like maybe like a secu security camera surveillance system in the area at the time so you can almost piece together a puzzle of what happened in an area it seemed pretty cool and i knew it appealed to you ships at the time i was like this is appealing to the batman in ships this is what this is appealing yeah. to right here yeah what do you think of that bro Well, she hasn't seen it, so it's going to be shit. It's going to be you, Sheps. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, he hasn't seen it. <laughs> shit. Uh, well, yes. I, I honestly, I think this is going to be like Gwent, where 
the first time you do one, it's because you have to do it because it's like a tutorial level and you just blast through it because you don't really care. And then, once you do one because you don't have to and you just feel like doing it and you pay attention, I, I'm not going to be surprised if this isn't one of my favorite parts of the game. Yeah. Like, okay, give an example. Fishy recently did uh, Mass Effect and Mass Effect, the Mass Effect series always has these little like puzzles where you have to hack stuff or whatever. Mm-hmm. And a couple of them are really good fun. Or Bioshock had one. We had to line up all the water or something, right? And I think this is like... I mean, I know it's on current gen, but I think this is the next generation of those kind of mini games where it's not just, you know, make the puzzle, you know, of all the dog bits and then you put it in the right place and look, it's a dog and you win, right? I think it's going to be... No, you have to actually do a bit of thinking and look around and really be interactive with these things. Mm. And I hope... I hope it's optional in that if you do it, it's going to lead to extra gameplay, you know, that, yeah. that doing it sort of maybe not unlocks areas, but unlocks dialogue options or, or new missions like side quests. Like if you don't do it, then you don't know, you don't see this one person. And then when you meet them on the street, you recognize them from the thing and that opens up dialogue options or intimidation options or something, right? Yeah. I'm hoping that's how it goes. There was a, uh, <clears throat> I think it was Katzpo who said in the chat when we were doing our, when we were doing the live stream, we were doing the watch along. He was saying, I really hope that there's a way for you to uh, up, buy a house and almost upgrade your house if you have one. So you can have a yard and there's like, and then I said on top of that, that you could have like a basement that's uh, like where all your gear is, where you could like jack into the internet and do some net running and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, jack that in, jack be, off, all the yeah. best things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll all jack off together. We'll be like, hey guys, I'm jumping on Cyberpunk. Anyone want to jack off too? Yeah, come on, let's right. go, let's go, bro. Exactly. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Um, when this game comes out in November, there will also be obviously uh, the AC AC content coming out that time as well. But do you see yourself ever doing any Cyberpunk content, Walshy? Uh, I reckon, like, definitely gonna play it because way things are going, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will probably release like at uh, mid the sort of time, and Cyberpunk's what is it, the nineteenth of November, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's enough. There's like a month gap there. So like, when Van Hour will be tied down to that, but then afterwards, when that sort of died down, like I think I probably could do like a review or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I think you should stay away because Cyberpunk is our turf. So everyone else out there as well, if you're listening, Cyberpunk is our turf. No one else allowed to make Cyberpunk content. Okay, we've got true. That. Okay, guys. So we've got mm. that. Glad we could put our name down to that before anyone else that, uh, claims it. There you right, go. stamps. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, ours. Exactly. There was one other little bit of information as well that uh, the so previously it was announced that the Xbox One. If you had the Xbox One version of Cyberpunk 2077 and then you bought an Xbox Series X, you would get the Xbox Series X version when it was available uh, via that smart delivery system that uh, Xbox keeps mentioning. But then they've also said that the same thing will be happening to PlayStation as well. If you have the PlayStation 4 version and you buy a PS5, you'll get the PS5 version as well for free. So I don't really understand what smart delivery is if... The third-party developers are just doing it anyway. I, I don't really understand what the deal is there, but I guess that's great for anyone who's buying a PlayStation 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. What, are you, what are you buying, um, Walshy? What's your next-generation console of choice? 100% um, PS5. Way. I, <laughs> like, I prefer Xbox as a system, and I prefer the controllers a bit. Like, oh, that's all the exclusives. No, X. Come on. Come on. Give Offset them a little sticks. bit of slack. Offset sticks. Come on. <laughs> you do get used to it, but I I, I prefer the PS5 as well. The, the DualShock, I mean. Mm. Yeah, I reckon PS5, I don't know if I'll get it this year. It really depends because announced God of War 2, I probably will get it this year. Otherwise, I might wait till like after Christmas, see if the price has gone down a bit. Perhaps. Mm. I'm kind of thinking the same way. I mean, the fucking thing's going to be expensive. There's going to be... I, when people say, like, oh, you know what, I'm going to wait maybe 2021, I'll, I'll see if I can afford it then. And it's like, well, yeah, fucking, this thing's going to be, like, 500 fucking quid. Who the hell's just got 500 quid just lying around just so you can spend it on a random-ass console, you know? 
I uh, I unfortunately am stupid with money and uh, I'll probably starve for that month or maybe the month afterwards and uh, I'm gonna have to get it day one like an idiot like an idiot right there so yeah if anyone wants to send me any Patreon money, that'll be great. It'll help out for it'll pay towards my Brussels sprout dinners and whatnot. I can only afford Brussels sprout. If that's what you're spending it on, I'm just closing the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we got it's like we're at a hundred dollars. Okay, let's uh let's spend that all on Brussels sprouts, lads. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was um that was the little bit of news that came out from there as well. Um, are you guys okay if I was to move on to the next topic? Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Mixer, the, I was going to say the popular live streaming website, but it really wasn't. Um, Mixer has been sold to Facebook Gaming. Mixer is no longer a thing. This was a Microsoft-owned uh, streaming platform, a bit like Twitch and YouTube Gaming and stuff like that. And the fucking thing's been sold. It's only been out for like maybe two or three years. And recently they signed a massive deal with Ninja and Shroud. Uh, at the times, I think they didn't know, they didn't say how much uh, money they'd paid them. But it came out recently that they paid Ninja $30 million for mm -hmm. three years of exclusivity with Mixer. And now Mixer's gone up and just gone, you know what? Fuck it, we're, 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 just, not, we're just not good enough, you know? We're just not doing it, you know? We're going to have to close up shop. Uh, Is anyone not... surprised? <laughs> I'm not surprised about Mixer, but I... So I thought um, Mixer had gone like bust, not been sold. And or just been closed down, but if it's been sold, it's funny because I said I guess Ninja goes to either back to Twitch or maybe he goes to Facebook. My exact words, I'm pretty sure. Because mm -hmm. um, I know I think Facebook has a deal with the dude from Epic Meal Time, Harley Morris. Oh, shit. okay. Um, and apparently they pay relatively well, although I think Facebook's demo is quite old. Maybe that's them trying to get younger people back on Facebook. Um, but I wonder if Ninja stays if his contract's still no so this is the thing he um with this whole merger with like mixer and facebook and stuff like that they he he's allowed to leave the contract if he wants to and he has chosen to but apparently apparently and this is a courtesy of our boy our super bro dan he gave me all the information on this and gave me the rundown apparently they offered him double what uh microsoft was giving him if they if he was to stay and stay with facebook gaming for the duration of his contract so he was only one year in and he would have to stay for a further two years but stay on facebook gaming wait if so if he they were saying though he made 30 million to basically made 30 million for the first year and they'd give him 60 million so another 30 million per year no, no, so what it would have been, the contract was 30 million for three years, but yeah. because Microsoft sold Mixer, he gets to get out of that contract early and he gets to keep the 30 million. Right, but exactly, so 30 million but, for one year, and Microsoft but Facebook, wanted, but Facebook, Facebook was wanted saying, to stay for the, the remainder, but, which is two years, wanted to stay yeah? for two, two years, which was the remainder of his contract, and they would have given him another 30 million on there, so it would have been 60 million, million. To, to, okay. 60 million in total, which... Fucking hell, insane money, and Ninja is rolling in that shit right now. But I mean, also, he rejected it. I mean, I guess, like, maybe if his his YouTube's got, like, 20 million subs, right? Yeah. If he was to just stream on YouTube and, and use, like, a good, you know, low-fee dono thing, mm -hmm. why wouldn't he just use that and he gets AdSense and all that stuff and he's more in control of his everything he's doing? Yeah. You know, I fucking this is a great thing for him. I mean, that's the sweetest deal in the world. You sign yourself in for a three year deal, and then you only have to do one year of it, oh. and you get to keep all of the money. Do you know then, what it might be? And then he gets to go back to wherever he wants. He can go Twitch, he can go YouTube, whatever the fuck he wants. This may be a sorry, well, should we get getting very technical? <laughs> that's no worries. I uh, this might be that he's seen his audience just completely dropped off because he went to Mixer, mm -hmm. and so even though. The money is great. His audience, and that's his real money maker. If his audience is dying off because no one has access to him, it may make more sense to him from a long term perspective. Like, yeah, it's great to get an extra 30 million, but he's already got 30 million. If he can return and keep his audience, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if 15 million a year with no audience 
is less appealing to him than whatever he can make from his audience every year on a platform where they can easily find him, like merch and all his deals and stuff. 100%. That's definitely what it is. And also, there is also something to be said about Facebook gaming. Apparently, the Facebook gaming is quite huge, even though I've never... Walsh, have you ever heard of Facebook gaming? Mm. I've, I've never fucking heard of Facebook gaming. Yeah, and also, it's something where, I know about. If someone was to tell me right now, go on to Facebook gaming, I'd be like, I don't even know where to start. I don't know where to start. Um, and also, Facebook in general, it's very like... The people that go on Facebook, they're either old people or they're really yeah. young people that don't don't understand how Reddit works or Twitter works or, or Instagram or something like that, right? So all of those views that Facebook claim that they're like they've got huge numbers and this year they grew even more and, and also with Twitch and YouTube gaming and stuff like that, they're all like fake views because people don't really... They don't watch you. They just... Oh, there's a funny clip that just went up and, and that's it. Like, I'll share that on my wall and and tag my grandma and, and repost yeah, this yeah. With, with prayers for, for, for whatever person who's getting surgery or whatever the hell is going on. It's all just ridiculous. So, I think he just left. He was like, no, I am not sticking with Facebook gaming. So I'm going to go to YouTube and make a killing. That's what I I'm just do. Googled it. Go on. It says, uh, apparently he said, he said he made about 10 million in 2018, so that's before the move to Mixer, right? right? Now, I don't know if that means only Twitch or collective, but again, if it's, um, if he's noticed that his audience is basically dead because he went to Mixer, then 10 million for the next 10 years is better than 30, 60 million in these three years. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so, that might be the play he's making. I, I don't really know. I, I'm not really like a ninja fan. I don't watch his stuff, so I don't... Yeah, so he's not my cup of tea as well, especially... All I ever know about Ninja is those cringeworthy videos of right. him trying to do yeah. Fortnite dances at, like, New Year's and whatnot. And... If the guy look, I'm I'm okay with being an idiot online and make it. And you you're making what? yeah, I know, I know. This is a weird thing for me to say. I usually keep it quite professional and never make an ass of myself ever. Um, you could not find any incriminating gifts of me anywhere. True, uh, especially not on our Discord link below. No, 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 definitely not, definitely not. Uh, but his one, but he he's making millions, so he's doing even better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no uh, just not by much, but a little bit, yeah. Yeah, just a hair, just a hair. This is a hair right there. Um, what are your What are your thoughts on on Mixer? Did you even have you even explored Mixer there, Walshy? Did you even know anything about it? Well, I did because it was I think where a lot of people knew knew about it was because it was like built into Xbox and it was super easy to use. Yeah. From that, like I did a bit of streaming on there, like Overwatch back in yeah. the day. It was like it was so easy to use. Like either way, he just got away with like thirty million dollars for doing a third of his contract. Man. Whatever he does next, like he's won to some extent. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Thirty million is enough that you. I mean, you never have to work again ever. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm gonna come out and say this. This is something that always kind of boggles my mind. Is you see guys like Elon Musk, Ninja, right? And you're like, you don't. Like, why are you? St why are you still going to work? Like, why? Right. Why are you still doing, going to all this effort? Because you don't have to. Like, he could do if he put ten million into shit like the stock market or something, and just lived off the dividends, or whatever it is, or put it into one of those accounts. He could live on off the interest. If he's in a one percent saving account, you know, that's like a hundred thousand dollars a year. Just Elon Elon Musk, I can say, okay, he wants to actually better the world with his money and yeah. whatever his resources. Ninja, he's just he's just accumulating the money. It's just like you're not giving anything valuable to society, but with entertainment. Your Fortnite does. Well, entertainment. Well, <laughs> actually, we I mean, shouldn't we shouldn't say anything. We do yeah. we do entertainment in quotation marks. Throw well. shade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, he's doing like eight to twelve hour streams. Like it's no joke. It is fucking tough. mad. Um. Mm. And especially like the amount he earns from it, like it, it just it's freaking crazy. But like thirty million in one year, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Shroud apparently made ten million as well in that time as well, which was yeah. fucking insane. Crazy. Um, 
the thing also uh, Walshy brought up about uh, Mixer, how it was built into the Xbox as well, how you could mm-hmm. very easily stream from there. So Mixer had on the Xbox dashboard, you could see people's live streams like straight away. It was just built into the dashboard and whatnot. You could easily stream to Mixer from your Xbox. And you had Ninja, arguably one of the top streamers ever on your platform. And Shroud, again, another really famous uh, streamer. Yeah. And still, Microsoft drove this platform into the ground. Suits, How? bruv. Suits. Uh, j- Mate, definitely. 100%, 100%. I'm and telling then also, you. And then also, there was apparently like a... So a sto- this story broke the day before my Mixer was announced that they... They got sold to Facebook Gaming, but it's probably unrelated. Apparently, there was like an executive there that was... I don't know what her name was, but she was apparently really racist and treating her black colleagues as slaves, apparently, she was saying. She was like, you're all my slaves. I don't know what the fuck is going on over there, but that company is bad. Mate, these, a lot of these companies are having to really like look at their houses and clean up before yes. uh, they start especially, doing stuff. Especially, especially now, right? And then they yeah. put out these cringe statements like "We stand with you" and "We we support this community." Like, well, right. apparently you don't. Yeah. P- mm. Prior to that statement, you were completely silent, and it seemed like you didn't give a crap. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's Mixer. Mixer's gone and dead now, and uh, Facebook Gaming is now taking take absorbing it anyway. Um, again, I don't know anything about Facebook Gaming. I hear that they're really big, but. I swear, isn't it like all grandmas and stuff like that on there? That's what I thought. (laughs) (laughs) So when will you be uh, streaming AC Valhalla on Facebook Gaming, Walshy? As soon as I get a $30 million contract. Ah, there you go, there you go. Facebook Gaming, Mark Zuckerberg, if you're out there. That's all you need. (laughs) That's all you need. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, did you also hear about... um, So this is a little side topic... The richest people in the world, like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Jeff Bezos, and stuff like that. Did you hear how much they increased in in wealth over this pandemic? It's a lot. A lot. It's something like I think Jeff Bezos was 111 billion dollars prior to the pandemic, and now he's at 156. So he's like 45 billion dollars in three months. Easy. Fucking hell! That's it's because of a um... ninja. It's, it's like that uh, risk investing type thing where, like, even if the stock market's fucked, it's really, like, lucrative. Like, um, that bloke who made a ton of money off the 2008, like, um, you know, all that Crash. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, he's invested tons right now because everything that's happened is really profitable because everything's undervalued or something. So, like, when everything goes back to normal, there will be cash now with a ton of money, basically. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. That, apparently that's the way to... The thing is, like, you can never guess that stuff because you see shit tanking and you're like, well, what if I buy and it goes down, right? But if mm-hmm. you have more money than God, like if you just made 30 million in in a year, <laughs> you could be like, I'll chuck 5 million at this, like, just, yeah. just in case, I'll just buy and I'm assuming that it's gone down, but I'm betting on my country coming back. Like, frick it, I'll just throw 5 million at it in little stages and then by the time you're done, you bought... Yeah, on the way down, but you also got caught the bottom and some of the that low area. And by you know, a year later, you've you've made like forty percent or something, and it looks like you're a genius. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's uh, so that's Mixer being sold to Facebook. Mixer and investing yeah. talk. You're welcome, boys. That's exactly. what you tune into the True Gamer podcast for. <laughs> this is exactly what they tune in for. Um, another thing that got announced as well is that Ghost of Tsushima went gold uh, the other day uh, you'd be very happy to hear about that Sheps, one of your yeah. most anticipated games of this year and also it got a rating of M as well I'm guessing because of the blood and apparently there's going to be an exposed butt I don't know what part of the story that's going to be in but that's don't care about the nudity <laughs> couldn't care less although I did I was meaning to make a video about the blood and uh, a couple of things so I've got to get those made um, and I need to get my pre-order and I need to freaking pre-order that Mate, I fucking pre-ordered the the stupid special edition with the mask. I don't even You're know what dumb. I'm gonna do with the goddamn mask. I know I'm dumb. I, I waste money like this. Come on, um, uh, well, she tell tell me what edition should I pre-order? Um, I haven't actually seen the editions, but like with a game like 
when there's a big game I'm really hyped for, I've only done it like four times. When there's games like that, like I did it with The Last of Us 2, I like to at least get some like memorabilia or something. So like in mm -hmm. a few years you can look back and say, you know, look, at least I got that thing, if the game yeah. is like that good. Yeah, I feel you with that. That was the thing. I uh, So I had the Ellie edition pre-ordered for The Last of Us 2, and I downgraded mm. it because a lot of people were saying bad stuff about the game, and I was like, ah, <laughs> oh, I would love to have that on my, my shelf, but mm. if it's bad, it's going to be an <clears> even <throat> worse reminder looking at it and going, fucking hell, this game sucked. Oh, I can't believe it was so terrible. So I downgraded it. Yeah, and that's that's where I stand at the moment. We, we are going to do a review episode soonish, so we won't talk too much about it. But yeah, we're just good. for now, <laughs> where you are in the game, how do you feel about having downgraded? I wish I had bought it. <laughs> I wish I had okay. bought the early edition. Uh, I am a little bit regretting it, but don't worry. I'm not going to let it consume me. After the podcast, <laughs> I'm going to go scream into a pillow. You know, just to say, <laughs> good. It's going to go right there. It's how we're going to go. Um, yeah, so that's uh, Ghost of Tsushima. It's coming out uh, July 17th? 17th? Yeah. 17th? Uh, I'm in between, obviously, we're going to get Iron Man VR. Everyone's looking forward to that, right? Everyone's looking forward to that. Of Even course. Though, that's so. the one. That's the, this year's most awaited game. Most anticipated game. Get out of the way, Cyberpunk. That's what's going to be happening. Facts. Right um, one, uh, sorry, do you mind if I move on to the next topic? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So this got sent to me today, actually, by Diogo and the lads in the uh, in the Discord server. So another, yet another leaked rumor of the Microsoft Lockhart edition has Fuck come up. Sake. Um, this one is only good because it actually has details of the power of the console. Okay. And, and it's not very good. It's not good at all. Make, so, imagine if they make this thing and they're going to start next gen with a last gen console. Right? And some, co some fucking dickhead at CD Projekt Red is going to go, well, this is a next gen console. We have to make all the gamers and then we're not going to be able to play the game. Because that's going to play the, the shit version, right? Yeah. It's going to be tempered. It's going to suck. Oh. So um, the, the specs on this console, just to give you a comparison between it and the Xbox Series X... Xbox Series X, 12 teraflops of GPU power and 3.5 gigabytes of usable RAM. The Lockhart, 7.5 uh, usable RAM right there, so 8 gigabytes less. And uh, 4 teraflops of GPU power as opposed Mate. to 12. Ooh. Mate, what's a third? Of, it doesn't even make a plus. It's it's so we can judge this one based on its stuff because it's using the same old architecture. Exactly. That's garbage. What's what's the that's like a ps4 pro exactly exactly the ps4 pro is 4.2 teraflops it's worse than a ps4 pro ridiculous Jesus. this is bad i mean i'm sure it will have some fancy new fake. stuff because it's uh because it's I gonna have it's like newer technology put into it but still that's that's oh my god oh jesus christ boys i would love to educate everybody on why suits were in everything Mm -hmm. Assuming this is real, <laughs> but I actually have to leave, so I'm really sorry. That's but I'll okay, catch Rosario. everybody, uh, I guess, in the next one. And fun, fun for me because now when I listen to this on the day in the live chat, this will all be new to me. This will be brand new to you. That's exactly. Right. All right, boys. All right, thanks bro. for uh, thanks yeah. for coming, Walshy. I'm sorry you have to now babysit Ed for a bit. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Bro. Catch you, boys, later. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Now we can talk shit about him. That guy is a <laughs> fucking cunt, isn't he? Just t tell us yeah, the truth. Tell us the truth. Watch, I'm, right? I'm glad you've invited me on the pod. In fact, when he invited me to come on here, he said, right, we're just going to chat shit about ships That's for a it. whole two hours. Now we can... It's it's just been an hour of foreplay, basically. basically. We can finally get into the podcast. There we go. Oh, my God. And this guy, this guy, his face is so ugly and whatnot. And it, it, mate, his, his, his penis as well, it's, best, it's really small. It's like one, one inch, but 1.8 is the optimum length, as we all know. Mm. But one meter, oh, terrible. It's just awful, man. This guy, is just, this guy sucks so much. God. Glad he's gone. Glad he's gone. And true gamers can now talk. True gamers can now talk. Mm. So, yeah, this Lockhart console, <laughs> he's going to listen to this <laughs> and he's going to fucking hate us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh boy! Um, also, he's an inverted gamer, so he automatically sucks. Uh, don't feel this, bad anymore. Yeah, there you go. Don't feel bad anymore. No one should. No one should. This Lockhart console. What the fuck are they thinking? What the fuck know. are they thinking? God damn it! I mean, like, go on, set, go on. What you got in your mind? What you got in your mind? I'm just, it feels like when I saw the PS5 
I know Xbox haven't done like a big event yet. I saw that PS5 event. All things, holy shit! Like this is the future of game. Like mm-hmm. uh, the PS3, uh, the PS4, Xbox One, sort of felt like a natural progression. But with this, it feels like we're jumping into the future. And with Xbox, everything we're hearing, you know, with like the same HUD, and that, and now this, it feels mm-hmm. like they're not really moving at all. When they, when like PS5 already have such an advantage, it's not good at all. You know. Right, it's not like they're, they're. It's almost like they're in the lead, and they're like, "Well, let's not rock the boat because we're doing great." You guys mm. are, you guys are in the in the uh, being left in the dust right now. You guys need to do something to shake it up to make it amazing. I will say they've got an incredibly powerful console, and it's gonna be. There's a lot of games out there on their on their website at the moment that's rocking uh, 4K, uh, 60 frames mm. per second, and stuff like that, which is all great. It's just they, they don't have the games for the console, games that you can only get on Xbox, and yeah. uh, games that people are really super excited for. And then also, when they come out with more news, when they go, all right, so we're not going to change the HUD, like you said, we're not going to change the dashboard, which mm. arguably is one of the worst dashboards, <laughs> yeah. in, my, in my opinion, and the people, people that I've spoken to, you've got an mm. Xbox, right? Yeah, like the thing is with that, for years, everyone was saying... Stop changing the fucking dashboard every week. Now, when they need to do a new dashboard, they've just said, ah, oh, old one works. You know what I mean? <laughs> God damn it. And the thing is, they go, oh, the reason why we want to keep it the same is because we want to keep it continuous. We want to keep continuity across all of our consoles. Mm. And I'm like, so what you mean is that all of the Xbox Series X developments in terms of the the os and stuff like that is going to be hindered because it also has to work on the previous generation console as opposed Mm. to you making a dedicated one for your new one that could be super slick and and have more features and stuff like that that's what you're saying there's a lot of a lot of crap and do you know what i've i've tried to keep a lot of my feelings down because i feel like it's unfair to constantly bag on microsoft and xbox and stuff like that Mm. But there are some things that they just sometimes it gets on my nerves like this smart delivery thing while it is great for people who like you and me right when we say okay we're gonna get the best version of the game that we that we buy whatever console we buy it on when we get the new console we'll get it that's great for us yeah yeah it is but it's very bad for the developers the developers aren't going to get to sell another mm. copy and that's that's not necess- they don't have i'm not saying that's a good thing i don't think they say they should sell another copy but they they lose out money there so they can't reinvest that money back into the game so to make it better or anything like that really? they they must piss off the publishers as well the publishers like so what we just we we're just going to give away free shit now is that is that what we're doing so they're pissing them off from the get go and then also they're going to piss off retailers as well with like when it comes to like digital editions of games. It's it's going to have ramifications and just so they can sound good to the consumer at the beginning. Oh man, this is there's there's a lot going wrong here. And then this Lockhart comes along and that just adds to the crap that's going yeah. on here. Yeah, I, th- I think they need to they need to stop fighting PlayStation. Cause that's sort of a losing battle. Yeah. Like after this, I wouldn't be surprised if they went into more like C type stuff because they They've already sort of, like, made a lot of their games playable on there. Mm-hmm. They need to do sort of a Nintendo where they, like, corner a certain market. Yeah. PlayStation, they aren't going to win. But if they try and do their own thing, they have the money to, like, do really well in their own sort of field, you know? Yeah. I agree. I mean, the, when they announced the stuff that it was, like, play anywhere and you can play on PC and stuff like that... It was it was an act of desperation. I'm sure they didn't want to yeah. do that, but they were like, "Shit, we're not selling Xboxes. Well, fuck. Let's get it on PC as well. Then at least we can make make money from our Xbox Studio games and stuff like that." And they did, and that's great. Again, that's a very good consumer move and whatnot. But mm. then it means that there's not really everyone that I've spoken to. They're like, "Well, I'm just going to play the Xbox games on PC when it comes out. Why would I? Why do I buy an yeah. Xbox?" And then, then you have to ask yourself as a person who's buying an Xbox. Well, then why should I buy an Xbox if Xbox aren't even supporting us when they they're giving all the games to PC and stuff like that? But again, pro consumer move because now everyone gets to play it regardless of whether they are. So I guess yeah. that's good somehow. Yeah, there's not enough reasons to buy an Xbox anymore. Is like the exactly. issue. Like um, they have Halo, but the development of that seems to be fairly fucked. Uh, yeah. Rumors about Fable Four. 
Mm-hmm. Like, if you have one game that's already shaky, it might be one good game. And against PlayStation, we already got we already know we got Horizon, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, probably got a War Two. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, before the consoles even out, they need to like get their shit together. Really, they do. They do. So they have a, an event coming up in July, right? Where it's going to mm. be first party games. Now, I've been burnt a few times. This is how I feel about, uh, you know, the new Batman game that's coming out as well. Yeah. Every five every five months or so, we seem to get a tease and it's like, <gasps> Batman game! Oh, oh, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> and then there's a rumor, it's going to be at this event. It's going to be at this event. It's going to be at that. And then it never comes out. So I've, I feel really burnt about that. I yeah. feel the same way about Xbox where... I was excited because they came out with this console. It's very powerful. I'm like, oh shit, this could be, this could be something. Maybe this might be a time to get an Xbox. Yeah. And then we're like, all right, they're gonna show gameplay. There's, they're doing a gameplay reveal event. And then we get barely any gameplay at that yeah. reveal event. I'm like, shit. I, I don't even remember. It's like the, the Valhalla thing. I don't really remember anything from that. Mate, it was, it was. It was all just a bunch of cutscenes and a bunch of in-game cutscenes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, there was some beautiful yeah. stuff, <clears throat> and there <throat> was some interesting stuff. There was actually one game that stuck out to me that did have a little bit of gameplay. It was a Bright Memory Infinite. It, apparently, it's being made by like two guys or something like that. But it looks so. <clears throat> it, it looks like <clears throat> a mixture between Japan, like Ghost of Tsushima and Cyberpunk. It was really <clears throat> fucking cool looking. Yeah, I think another one you're on about. Yeah, um, but other than that, I was like. Well, what else? What is what is good about this? What am I? You just burnt some goodwill that you had for me here, and unfortunately, Valhalla got sucked into the the mix of that as well. Mm. Where it's like gameplay reveal event, guys. Okay, you're just like, gonna show us a trailer. All right. Okay. Like, listen, I, go, go on, go on. We've already pissed off the four pillars community. Go on, let's let's do it. Like, let's do it. I'm I'm just glad that Sheps is gone for this because <laughs> I we don't mind it. <laughs> much because like seriously it's like i knew what to expect like especially like the day before they said it'll be a demo which i was already expecting but like i suppose with the connotations of gameplay trailer i get why everyone's like so pissed up about it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is the thing where it was two two fronts that were that was wrong so they said gameplay trailer and mm. To the normal person, when you hear gameplay, you think, okay, like, what you're going to see when you play the game. Cool, no problem. But then there's trailer, and for people who have have, uh, watched Assassin's Creed gameplay trailers before, that's exactly what Assassin's Creed does when it comes to gameplay trailers. Um, And then there was Microsoft being like, this is going to be a gameplay reveal event, everybody. Woo, everyone join in. We're going to watch some gameplay. And (laughs) then that got fucked up. And then Ashraf tweeted out, who... Don't get me wrong, people in the AC community like yourself, like James, like Tyler, like Ethan, George, and all the other mm. lads over there, um, those guys do follow Ash, and when Ash says, okay, so it's not going to be a gameplay demo, it's just going to be a trailer, just so you guys know, because he saw everybody overreacting, <laughs> but ordinary guys like me, and people, and you know, Sheps who follow decent people are not, not people like Ashraf <laughs> <laughs> no I'm messing with you oh shit that's, this is I, I can say this now and it seems funny but before I was just like yeah you know what the guy seems like a solid guy but I didn't know anything about him yeah <laughs> oh it's so fucking bad because like, we all loved him yeah there's so much record there's so much like if you look back you can see hundreds of people like, basically everyone in the community but always like a few saying like how much they love Ashraf because mm-hmm. we all did that's why it's so polarizing but you know goes um, i guess that's uh, do you know what i because i trust james a lot and i trust ethan a lot, i trust all those guys a lot mm. when they say when they speak about ashraf and when they talk about by the way i call him ashraf email because i i fucked up one time so his name is ashraf email forever mm. um <laughs> they talk about darby mcdevitt i'm like well these guys i trust and these guys love these w w mcdevitt and ashraf so in <clears throat> it, i will then love them as well yeah. But it turns out I should have made my own opinion. I, I'm sorry. You guys are untrustworthy. Everything you guys say are untrustworthy. In fact, all of your videos, I'm going to have to disregard them all now because <laughs> they, they mean nothing. They mean nothing. Yeah. We knew about all this. This is, this is why we love <laughs> Ashra. That's it. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. All right. Um, 
what was we talking about before? We were talking about Xbox, wasn't we? About the yeah, game yeah. Over. yeah. Anyway, that was a terrible thing, and it did burn a lot of goodwill. Me and Sheps were saying as well. We were like, God damn it, man. We we came in here hopefully trying to be convinced because he's a big Halo fan and he wanted to see what Halo was all about on the Xbox. Mm. But it looks like it's just going to be. I don't know, five to six more years of just the same old <laughs> Xbox producing nothing and and trying to play catch up when they can't. Yeah, yeah, that was their chance to like win people back. I sort of felt like a fairly mediocre like Nintendo Direct or something. Those all like indie yeah, games. Most yeah. people aren't too interested in. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what? Um, I will say this July event. Apparently, the rumor is, and again, I'm trying not to get myself excited. The rumor mm. is that it's going to be bloody fantastic. And apparently, they're going to announce a price for the Xbox Series X. And apparently, it's going to be a lot cheaper than what people are expecting. What sort of price are you thinking for the Xbox Series X? Well, like, whatever they do, it needs to be cheaper than the PS5. That has to be, like, the angle they go down. Yeah. Was the um, rumored price for the... Because they had the two editions, but the... Which has got leaked, apparently. Was it like 500 quid, 400 quid? It's a bit of a... Well, fucking, if you if you really want to look at all of the leaks, there's every price imaginable. But um, there was one price for the digital edition, and it was apparently 399 is what got leaked for that. Mm. Now, people theorized from there that if you add the hard... Sorry, add the disk drive in, is it 50 pounds more? That sounds logical. But then there's somebody, there was me that was saying that, as well as I was trying to say that maybe they take a hundred dollar loss on the on the digital edition. The, the so the disc version will be four nine nine and the discless version will be three nine nine because mm. anybody who buys a game on the PS5 digital version, they're gonna have to buy the game through PSN and they get a bigger cut of the revenue when they buy the game through there. So yeah. maybe Maybe they're better off that way, you know? Maybe they're more likely to do that. But what that's the rumours going round. What do you think? What do you think? Um, Like, price-wise, it could be anywhere, really. I think that's the big thing everyone's waiting on. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's going to be at least... My guess is, like, 425 But obviously, there's there's two editions, so... Mm. Don't... Not too sure. Either way, I think the Xbox has to be, like bit cheaper i think that'll win a few people over um i reckon it'll be at least 400 quid like either edition there was a there was a rumor going around about the xbox series x and this lockhart edition that they're gonna go for this is quite ridiculous i don't know if i believe this they were gonna go 200 pounds for this lockhart version mm. and they were gonna go 399 for the xbox series x 399 for that much power is absolutely insane. If they yeah. could fucking do something like that, they'll be miracle workers. Yeah. And I mean, it's Microsoft. They're, they're willing to lose a lot of money. You know, they're willing to throw money away, as as we saw earlier on with Mixer. They just threw that money into the wind <laughs> right there. But that's a lot of money to be... That, that's very cheap. That's so cheap if they can get to that. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's got to be more than that. Uh, that's what I think, especially because the technology that's going into it is so like cool and powerful, and the SSD, at least in the PlayStation, is super sophisticated and custom mm. and stuff like that. Oh, man, it, there was one point me and Sheps were like, "There's no way this is under five hundred pounds. Surely this has to be like five fifty, maybe even six hundred. But we keep fucking flying around with all the new rumors <laughs> that come out, which is yeah. difficult to say. God. Is there um is there a feature of the PS5 that you're you're looking forward to or one that you want to see? Is there anything that you've been thinking about? That's kind of a big question to spring on you like that, but it was just something I was thinking about. Me, it's backwards compatibility. Really? Like, okay, so this is good. Yeah. I'm I'm not big on the backwards compatibility hype train, and and I talk to people about it, and I'm like, do you know what? I, mm. Unless it's true nostalgia, unless it's like PS1 games or something, I don't care. But go on, tell me tell me about your backwards compatibility. What you're looking for. Me, like, then, like, you know, I'm going to have three or four, con more, like, more than that, but, like, PlayStations, like, a PS2, I don't have a PS3 or in 5, to, like, switch those out to play games. It's more a convenience than anything, but as well, it means, if you're like me, I thought the PS4 was backwards compatible, so I, I bought, um, a Gear Side 4, and, like, there's games on the PS3 I'd maybe like to play, 
it's it's just a major convenience really and it saves you a ton of money so you don't have to kind of backstep and buy older consoles and it's just far easier really yeah okay for that at least it's it's great at least for the um for like ps4 and whatnot that's that's gonna be that's gonna be good for that but do you want to go even further back do you want to go any further than the ps4 or not really yeah i do like um there's some ps2 games that i quite like like go on, hit me with the nostalgia go on hit me hit me with some of your favorites go me on. it's mainly crash bandicoot wrath of cortex Woo! twin sanity angers um what else on the ps2 uh sonic sonic heroes oh yeah There's a lot of platformer type stuff on the ps2 um obviously like it's i'm hoping they'll like remaster like vice city ea3 oh. last stuff dude it, rockstar they would they would probably release gta 5 on ps6 before they release vice city <laughs> again that's probably what they'll do these guys are not done release re-releasing gta 5 for another console <laughs> yeah I'm, it's i, I want to know what they're doing with um dead 2 if that's going to be like those smart delivery things because the day before the uh, ps5 event there was like a leaked or apparently leaked star game on amazon for like 70 quid my guess with that was it would be gta 5 and red dead bundled together it seems Ooh. like they're not in like red dead 2 mm. like at least not yet so i don't know what they're doing with that they should do remasters though there's tons of money in that no. yeah it's um especially because it's, this is the thing because the ps4 couldn't play ps3s that opened the gateway to all the remasters now i'm, I'm okay with remasters especially if they put a lot of effort into them but with ps5 because it can play ps4 games i bet that's gonna limit i bet that's gonna be nearly drop to zero the amount of remasters that we get which really sucks yeah. because sometimes you can get some really good remasters done not like the Mafia trilogy, which apparently is broken no matter what platform you play it on, how many times they remaster mm. it and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, man. I think that's that's okay, though, because we think, in my opinion, if there's games where you can just play them normally like on whatever console it's from, we think that I'd developers more pressure to make a remaster or a remake to more like worthy of its title and isn't just a reskin like it will sell better because people know they can just play the original if they like yeah yeah you know, uh, and milked a ton uh, sure. uh amir amir the synth potato he he got really upset after the playstation 5 reveal event when um they announced another gta 5 port and he was like this these guys came out with red dead redemption 2 and they've stopped supporting it already he was like oh, yeah oh, this is oh he loved really the online for that yeah online. it seems it seems fun as well like i i want to get one day uh fishy together so i can play just a i want to do a funny gameplay video with us just being dicks in red dead <laughs> online just shooting each other and going on missions together and stuff like that and see if i can it's get such a good time it is I, I much prefer the world of red dead 2 as well to gta yeah. 5 it's how like cinematic it feels in like just unscripted moments. It's so cool, and it, there's so much potential they just haven't tapped on because it's not as profitable as GTA. Bit of a shame. I don't. So maybe you get this because uh, maybe somebody can answer in the chat as well when we're watching this on like the live uh, premiere. How? What is the appeal really of GTA for you? I I've played it. I do love the the heists. In fact, that's my only mm. thing that I really like in it. Everything else just seems kind of not kind of crappy. Like I don't I don't like doing I don't like roaming around in the world just like that because dickheads just come along and shoot you and then you're just you're dead and it's just like okay, well, what's the objective here? What are we doing? What are we doing in this? We're doing nothing. Okay, that then mm. I don't want to play this. And then we have the the races and i'm like okay a little race is quite cool especially on some of those custom maps they could be quite fun but then what that's i mean that's not what gta was all about gta was all about that cool money heist uh cinematic story and like saying fuck and dr doing drugs off of, off of hookers and stuff like that yeah yeah like this is coming from someone who put like 
75 days on it in the online. I got like level oh, shit. 150 or something. Yeah. It's, we spent a, a stupid amount of time on that game. For me, not just because like the updates have made it far better for people who pay to like grieve people, f- just like on its own, I enjoy GTA less than I used to. Like in terms of Rockstar properties, I think Red Dead is far better. I know is probably better, and I think GTA San Andreas for me is maybe better than five, which I don't, I would never have said like six Ooh, years ago. Yeah, um, shit. I think it's because like <clears throat> it's Rockstar. What they do, they can do best. Like in the online, it's a lot of it's the scope of it. A lot of the people don't have just the manpower and the budget to make something that big. Yeah. So like, it's sort of the way to go for a game like that. They really do have something special over there, something unique. There, they're like they have all that money and all of that brand power. They can just make something huge that no one else can. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess uh, CD Projekt Red as well. They're making something huge over here as well. Oh boy. Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something about GTA. Da-da-da-da-da. Nope, it's gone from me. I'll probably remember it tomorrow, and then I'll I'll start the podcast up again, and we can talk about it then. <laughs> sure. Um, Marvel Avengers as well. They showed off some Marvel Avengers war yeah. table stuff and whatnot. <clears throat> How interested are you in Marvel Avengers? I oh, see. Like at first, when they first announced it, and there was like the first trailers. It was like didn't care because i thought that's just a shit trailer yeah because <clears throat> it's like you know it's the avengers i was like oh it's gonna be good like it, they released another trailer a few hours ago like i'm at a point where I don't care at all to be honest with you it, it it just doesn't have me interested it's weird the really like scuffed avengers it's not just because like i'm used to the mcu ones because like you'll see them in the comics and you think you know that's iron man that's captain america Mm-hmm. They look really weird for some reason. I don't know if it's like the animations or something, but they look a bit off. Gameplay just isn't getting me that much. I'm not. Oh, it's just not getting me really. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you. This, oh, do you know what? And the, do you know what I've heard from other people as well? Some people have played it, especially after that like war war table event. People mm-hmm. have played it and said that like it feels clunky. It feels very like shallow. It doesn't seem like it's very deep in story and whatnot, which is really strange because you have all of the the whole of the mcu and you have all of the comic books to like reference when it comes to yeah. story and things like that and cool set pieces and you somehow come up with nothing um we'll have to see when the game comes out and luckily cyberpunk shifted its date because i think this was scheduled around about the same week to come out yeah i don't know if it would have survived if cyberpunk is still in the same spot yeah it- <laughs> It feels like it's going to be kind of like dead on arrival. Like, yeah. It really feels as if people have forgotten about it when it's yeah. like yet to release. I bet you. I bet you this game's going to come out and it's going to be a five, maybe a six out of ten yeah. on like Metacritic. And people are going to, there are going to be a, a handful of people that try it. And then a month later, it's just going to be one or two people in the servers. No one's going to be able to find games or anything like that. And it's going to be yeah. just dead. It's going to be just dead. Oh, I don't even think I'm going to pre-order it. And I usually pre-order every game so I can at least play it and give my impressions on it. But yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'm going to buy it. Cause like I've made the mistake of like oftentimes of like being a thing where it's a property. I like, I'll buy it and then it's a bit shit. Like I don't think I'm going to, I don't think I'll buy this. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, what else have we got to talk about? The only other thing I wanted to talk about, and I don't know how interesting this is to you or anything like that, but um, you know, recently, as well as like Ashraf getting getting caught for some some dodgy mm. shit, and yeah. then a bunch of other people coming out talking about their experiences with both Ubisoft and also other people and whatnot, completely unrelated to Ubisoft. It's just been yeah. the time to to unload all of the secrets and stuff like that. There's also been one. Um, it's about journalists and whatnot and uh specifically ign as if you didn't know that ign was like a, a shady place and whatnot yeah and journalists yeah are shit, pretty shit and whatnot um apparently one of their one of their journalists came out and said that ign lied about 
Amy Henning leaving Sony. So a- Amy Henning did leave Sony, but apparently yeah. they reported that it was a hostile uh, removal. Like they they kicked her out because she she Shit. didn't she didn't follow orders or something like that. But it was a completely unverified rumor, something that they they didn't even they just made it up on the spot apparently to make it sound juicy, and then oh. they published it. Is that um Amy Henning like the Naughty Dog one? Yes, the Naughty Dog uh, writer, yeah. Holy shit. It's, and apparently, apparently they just it. made that shit up on the spot, and I was just like, the fuck is wrong with you guys? This is why what? people don't trust journalists. <laughs> yeah, that... Like, it, it surprises me because I haven't heard it, but, like, it hasn't shocked me in the sense of, like, oh, my God, UGN did something a bit shit. <laughs> That's a men- you know what I mean? It's, right? <laughs> it should do, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's just like, ah, oh, yes, yes, jo- a gaming journalist. Yes, much, yeah, very much integrity. Yes, you've got lots of integrity. <laughs> yeah, so. And apparently they did one other thing as well. Um, because they just needed a, a headline for that day that they just wanted to make something up, they also made up a story that The Last Guardian, the game that did come out, was cancelled, yeah. that it wasn't going to come out, and then the game does come out. It's just like, why... As well as that one, that one isn't even that interesting. It's like they just made exactly. up a crappy... Re- it's like going to school and be like, guess what? Derek likes muffins. It's like, that's not even a good rumour! <laughs> yeah. Why did you start that? <laughs> yeah, that's... I, I'm sure I saw the other day, like, Neil Druckmann, uh, Bruce Straley, like, beefing one of their editors, because, like, because uh, he left, he, like, told them that, like, the gen made him, like, say some shit that, like, they were mad about. It's like... It's, it's it's just IGN really. It's as I say, it should be a surprise, but with them, it's not really. You know. Yeah, fucking hell. I don't know what's going on with them over there. Anyway, that's all the stuff that we had to talk about. Um, there is also an event as well coming up. What's it? The DC Fandom. That's in like I think it's like twenty fifth of July. The apparently is, apparently that is where they're going to be showing off the. <laughs> that's where they're going to be showing yeah. off the next Batman game. But god damn it, if we yeah. haven't heard that again and again and again. I, I, yeah. I just can't believe it anymore. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna believe that game is gonna be shown off until it's in my hands and I can put the disc in the PS4. That's the only time I'm gonna believe it. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Um, this is the part of the show where we're gonna talk about uh, what we've been playing recently. What have you been playing recently, Warshi? Well, I um bit of the Last of Us Two. Ooh, it's like, nice. Thing is, that took a toll on me. Like, I really love the game. Like. It's the type of thing where you can't it's, it's a game i love but i couldn't play it in like four or five sittings like spongebob battle for bikini bottoms just come out that's a classic so i've picked that up and started <laughs> playing that instead I fucking love that game i really do it's so good one guy so i know one guy who's playing that game and he goes to me the remaster of that game apparently isn't very good, and I w- and I said to him that like, he, he he didn't say it was bad. He was like, eh, you know, it's it's just a it's just a little remaster. It's nothing too special, you know. It's it's SpongeBob for God's sake. And I was like, okay, no problem. And he goes, the the remaster isn't that isn't that good. And I was like, the remaster or the game? The game? Surely mm-hmm. it's 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 SpongeBob. Come on, it's not. Come on, it's not that good. Is it? Come on. Yeah, that was that was another journalism thing because like, journalism thing, like um, it's a GameSpot. Have you seen that that review where it's like it's basically the same thing as Cuphead? The guy's just really shit. At, like a fairly easy get. Not Cuphead, but like this game's really easy. But like he's really shit at it. Like he can't do this really easy puzzle. And he says this is inaccessible. It's bad. And then, like, IGN marked it down for not being, like, a full remake. That's the hard thing with things like this, because people really get their expectations up. Uh, like, it's just a reskin, which I'm I'm all right with. There you go. I, I'm glad you're, you're enjoying that. How are you? We don't want to go too far into, obviously, spoilers and things like that, but... How f- how do you feel about the uh, about the Last of Us so far? I mean, how much have you played actually? I've played about all those. I think I'm behind you now. Yeah, so, yeah, because I've been busy with SpongeBob. But like, <laughs> it's too someone good, get man. someone get Neil Druckmann on the phone, guys. I was playing Last of Us, but fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Get the real game of the year on the line, SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants. There we go. 
I can't turn it down. So I don't care. It's SpongeBob. Oh boy. It, I'm not saying it comes before The Last of Us. But, but it comes before The Last of Us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah look, last, it's Last of Us One is like probably in my top five. So mm-hmm. I bought this thinking like this is gonna be one of my favourite games ever. Mm-hmm. Like obviously I don't know because it's so narrative. I need to stick for London. Like so far I'm loving it. It's like it's a fucking journey, man. Yeah. This is like mo this is probably the most a game has just made me like feel. Like in the least pretentious way, mm-hmm. most of the games made me just like think about shit yeah. after playing it. It's um well, I want to finish it to know like why it's so polarizing because I thought I did after about the three hour mark. You know the the bit I mean. Yep, like, yep, yep, I know. And then I thought I did a bit I've sort of recently crossed, which was sort of like a shift. And like when the game finishes, I'll have to properly like take a look at it. So far, so long as they like stick the land on it, I think it's got the potential to be like one of the best games ever. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So far, I'm I'm in that boat as well. Um, I I've been streaming the whole thing to to the Combo Plations channel where you guys are watching this one. I don't know. Uh, Shep's actually convinced me into it. It was just sort of like out of nowhere. It was like, bro, do you want to stream it? Because it'll be it'll be quite fun, and like people probably want to see your reaction and stuff like that. And the rate that I'm doing at is perfect because people are playing the game just a bit faster than me, so then they can come and watch the stream as well afterwards. And people are loving it. They're all enjoying themselves. We had um, there is a a sex scene in the in the game, and that got us instantly uh, deleted. It got that that stream instantly deleted off of YouTube. Um, it was very. It came out of nowhere. I didn't even know it was coming. You know, I didn't know about it. So I can't be held accountable for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. But I'm as I'm not going to say any more on it. But I can't wait to do the the review episode, and I want to talk with a bunch of people, and I want everyone to write in their thoughts and stuff like that because mm. this on top of it being one of the most anticipated games it's probably going to have the most conversation around it as well like people are going to be like yeah oh we need to talk about this we need to talk about this it's got to be great it's got to be great oh jesus christ some of the guys in the in the discord have have taken the meme of me wearing the the kfc hat and saying i didn't <laughs> hug leonardo three times in a row and i'm proud of it and they've also put the face uh the female face at uh, filter on me, so I'm a girl in that in that photo it as well. So much fun with that at man. <laughs> oh, did you see the one of um of Tyler and me? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> oh. oh shit, I don't think Tyler has seen it yet because I haven't been blocked by him. So he, you know, this is it's a good sign. It's a good sign right there. Mm. <laughs> oh, so yeah, The Last of Us. We've both been in that, and uh, and you a bit of SpongeBob as well. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, bro. Um, let's move on to some questions. Some of our bros sent in some questions, especially when I, I said that you were going to be on there. Everyone got really excited and everyone was yeah. like, oh my God, we had to say hi to the big YouTuber. And I was just like, guys, he's not, he's not that famous. Come on. Let's just, let's just be honest. You know, he's not, he's nothing compared to us. Right. 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 And then it was just all crickets. Yeah. That's what I think. <laughs> Uh, would you mind if I read you a few of these questions from our from our bros over on the Discord server? Of course not. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, Mario5380, he writes in first of all and he says, Eddie and Sheps, all I have to say is do not... <laughs> okay, so this isn't the question. Do not ask Walshia about Marquee uh, oh, 1989. What the hell is Marquee 1989? Mario... Well, fuck this! <laughs> such a good time. The ball was rolling. It was going to be episode nine of True Game. Was going to be the best. You have fucked it. <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? Please tell me, please. Okay. Do you ever like your mates in like an old film that like the world has just forgotten about or anything like that? <clears throat> what? Do you ever? You know, there's like films like weird. Like fucking disturbing films that like we just don't pay attention to. Right, it's, yeah. It's the type of thing the world has forgotten about. It should have stayed forgotten. No one's thought about this thirty-one years, <laughs> and now we're all having to sort of face it. Basically, I found about this about this through uh, Ben Higgins. Okay. Ben Higgins. 
Uh, it's basically, do you know about a man called the Marquis de Sade? I've heard of this. Where do I know this from? It was in Assassin's Creed. I was going to say, is it an Assassin's Creed reference? Okay, go on. He's like, but he's like a real person. Okay. With a history lesson here. Basically, Marquis de Sade was like a guy. He was a total hedonist. He was also like a sexual libertine where he thought nothing should be off the table, which is like a horrible mix. Bro, um, do you know 120 Days of Sodom? Yeah. Wrote that, like the original thing. Oh. Um, wrote some other things. Like, he's just a weird guy. Okay. Basically, there is a film called Marquee. You know, you know, it's not called Marquee 1989. It's from the year. Okay. Let me search. Um, this. Hold on. Search for it. No. Stop. What? What's wrong? <laughs> well, I've got to know what it is. <laughs> okay. he did this. Don't don't blame me for this. What the? So hold on a sec. These are they like dogs? What the hell are they? Hold on. I'm looking at image searches. Oh my god, that's fucking that's nightmare fuel right there. These like there's like dogs and like pigs. What the fuck? Yeah, there we go. What there the go. hell? What are these? Why do they have? They got like dicks with faces out. What the fuck is going on? Why is this? Yeah. That's, what that's the? Yeah, this. What? Why? Why are you? What? What is? You, why is this? Why has this come up? Why have you got into this conversation with Mario? Look, what are you two DMing this about? Is Mario's fault. Wait, <laughs> hey, it's like Marquee, Marquee the Sard. He's Jeez. he's a monkey, I think. Some like debate whether he's a monkey or a dog. Oh, um, God. yeah, basically, it's it's a little story about him. It's the type of thing where, like, I looked on the IMDb reviews, and there's fully, we're just unironically saying this is a masterpiece because he slips <laughs> in all this like social commentary shit, like French Revolution, all that. It's, the, it's fucked. There's a all scene where, like, a market, was having a dick out a with along. a head on it. What the? F we we did a watch along. Look what? Me. Yeah, not 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 like on YouTube. It was like me and a few mates in the community. It was like Joe, Fainted Scarab Joe, uh, Zeke Collins, Ben. Yeah, we had a watch of it. Jeez. It's fucking horrible. It's, uh, it's, so if you want to have a watch along, be sure to uh, donate to the Combro Sations Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next movie club, guys. We're going to be watching it in the next movie club, all right, guys? No, Everyone you know tune people hold you to that, though. Me. You know, like, and shit are gonna tell you to do that. Oh my god, this looks disturbing. I, I would have to. Oh my god, my brain. I'm looking at one of them right now, and the guys, the guys, literally writing something down on a piece of paper, and his dick with a face on it is like staring back at him. It's fucking. What like, the fuck? whole thing is on YouTube. I thought we watched it. It's what? Like, it's got like seventy k views or something. And it's not been taken down. Mate, what the hell is Mario? You're a weird guy. All right, okay, okay. Let's let's move on to something else. Let's uh let's move on to the next topic. Shall the next question? <laughs> shall we? Let's go on in. Um, the next question is from Uncle Noli. This is Hamid over here. He says, um, Walshy, since your channel has passed the Combrosation channel in subs, mother. Fucker has to bring it up. Exactly. <laughs> what tips would you give Eddie and Sheps to boost their channel? Love you guys. <laughs> so go on, give us all the details and uh, don't spare any of the the secret stuff. <clears throat> Assassin's Creed. Done. There we go, guys. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're turning into an Assassin's Creed channel. Yeah. It, it's the it's the gift that just keeps on giving. Okay. All right, it's... guys. We're gonna be Assassin's Creed channel. <laughs> I've just been really lucky with that, to be honest. Now, do you know what? Shep said it as well. Like, before you came along as well and did your stuff, we were saying, like, I think we just do too much. I think we, we have, a, we have a, like, our movie club, we have anime club, we have gaming, we have just r drama shit that comes along and whatnot, movies we talk about. It's yeah. too much all in one. So that's why we, we split the channels. And also, Shep's is doing the Ghost of Tsushima stuff over on Eat, Sleep, Game, Repeat, the other channel we've made over there. Yeah. So... We're testing out some stuff and seeing what sticks and whatnot, but that that could definitely be it. You could just stick to one game and then just go, you know, you got you got great stuff there. Yeah. Um. Yes. Go on. Did you want to say something? 
I know. I was just gonna. I was just saying, like, uh, to probably because it's like, I mean, it's sort of like a niche. Like no one was. So like, if there's a game, you think yeah. there's like a big fan base for it, and like, the, the content for that is like disproportionate. You can like do bits of that. Like I know, Sonic YouTubers do really well. Like I watch Doctor Who YouTubers. There's like none of them. So they do really well. It's like if there's ever a topic where it's like a big fan base here and like not that many people doing content, like. They really well off that type of stuff. Yeah, it's it's definitely when you, it does help. I think when you niche down and when you pick one thing, you just go, "This is what I'm gonna, this is what I'm gonna be doing right mm. here." Um, our next question is from Ashton hashtag Eddie. Listen to the weekend. <laughs> He's trying to get me to listen to the weekend so bad. Um, he says, "Congratulations, Walshy. You've nabbed a spot on a podcast hosted by two talentless hacks. It's it'll only go uphill from here." Oh, that's. That wasn't even a question. Oh. That was just a dig at us. That's just uh, that's just unfortunate, right there. <laughs> well, Ashton, uh, you're a, you're a simp of conversations. Uh, everyone who's listened to the last, as always, podcast you will know, because that's that's what he put his uh, his Patreon name as. They, they read it out regularly. If any of you guys are, are oh, fans yeah, of that, yeah, as always, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a simp. That's no problem. We 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 like our simps over here. Uh, the next question is from uh, Troy Baker's Persian son, which is uh, Ozzy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Troy Baker meme that started in one of our yeah, one of our yeah, streams, and fuck that went that went mad. Um, hey, what was she on the podcast? Question for you, pal. Uh, would you want to start your own podcast series at some point? Do you reckon? Yeah, like feel like with YouTube cast it's like the natural progression for a lot of people mm. like so it's so easy to do now where like tons of people have done it i could do because i feel like after valhalla's done i could do anything really so like, maybe yeah also i don't i don't think you have many like um much content that allows people to ask questions or get your opinions on something and whatnot mm. and if you was to do a podcast even if it was just by yourself and whatnot which do do ha people do do that and whatnot it's fine you can get people to write in and ask questions about the wealth of assassin's creed that you know or the, yeah. whatever you're playing or whatever yeah. at the time so it could be a way for a for them to get to know you and also a way to get their desperate questions answered now prepare yourself because i've seen the questions that james gets all the time and every fucking yeah. time it's like do you think this could be a reference to bayek do you think that this could be a reference to cassandra do you think that this apple of eden could find its way into modern day could you yeah. and it's just, oh for fuck's sake jesus christ this question's been answered a thousand times and i don't care <laughs> oh. yeah so, so prepare for that prepare for that you know um, Diogo comes in with the next question. Diogo, voiced by Troy Baker. He says, uh, question, who makes the better AC content? Walshy or Combroplations? I mean, we made mm. that one video talking about how that wasn't gameplay in the, the yeah. trailer. Uh, and you've made about 40 other videos, so... Shit. It's in the seventies now. Seventies, my motherfucker. One private videos because did some content before, so maybe. maybe. Like, in terms of AC, you know, what we were saying about niches. Yeah. By the I think in terms of the niche of like AC gameplay trailer runs, you lads have got that down. I haven't oh. seen anyone run about gameplay like you two. <laughs> We are what we are. We're just too fucking. We've been on the internet for too fucking long, and we've been playing games for too fucking long that we just like. Do you know what? I've had fucking enough. We're gonna rant about everything. All right, fucking you, you Ashraf over there. You think you think you're gonna fool us with this goddamn gameplay? It's not fucking gameplay, and I'll fucking tell you. How I'll play it. <laughs> Oh, but that's uh, that's what we bring to the table. You know, that's what you guys tune in for, and uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> With the um the private videos that you got, what made you want to do that? I mean, I didn't private any videos, and now look, there's there's gifts of me back when I was chubby and had a had a pencil pencil beard and and stuff like that. I mean, that's just great stuff, right? Don't you want that for yourself? Yeah, I mean, looking at like you know, as you say, the picture of you in the KFC hat. I think <laughs> everything everything I've done on the internet, I just want to out. Like, <laughs> Year seven Instagram posts, put oh. them in there too. All of it. I think that's a, a great idea. Oh, um, there you go. It's, it's quite shit. Like, it's not that interesting, really, because um, 
feel like people or like around the time I was for them YouTube was always like a dream it was like what being an actor was in like the 50s or something like that yeah something that anyone feels that they can do cause it's so easy and obviously people have been really successful from it. it's like I always wanted to do it first content I, I ever did like Minecraft videos um like I was about 10 like six years ago with some Damn. mates I think those are deleted now um uploaded some there was a walking dead app and so in 2015 i did like some videos where like i'd record my phone off my dad's ipad like to hey. this walking dead app <laughs> it was deleted i wish they weren't deleted oh um, no that would have been so funny to go back to to like when you hit like i don't know like 10,000 100,000 whatever sub mark you choose to react to your old content of you just like out of focus just shaky ipad <laughs> camera footage and whatnot. it's like oh so uh, uh we're gonna play uh, uh walking dead uh, uh hope you guys yeah. like and subscribe uh. <laughs> my voice is so high like, <laughs> i'm serious it's fucking bad oh yeah my. Look, i've got that 2016 when overwatch was out I, I did some overwatch content like I like kill cams and that by like um getting a game clip and my mate to screen record it on the xbox app off moby zen and then it to me on whatsapp they'd put it through a free editing software on my phone and I'd upload it it was a quite inoffensive um 2017 <laughs> is like some gta stuff like the rockstar editor yeah. i did like a gta series gta bikers which is quite classic Damn. Um, in 18, I wanted to be like a commentary YouTube because I wanted to do that for like a bit. So I uploaded a video like, like Morgs ads. A bit weird. That, um, that sounds weird. That does sound weird. <laughs> I've got like, um, then obviously 2019 is when I was like, end of the summer, of the summer, like, I was feeling a bit down and like, a in the end, I was like, I've done fucking nothing. So, like, I'm going to do YouTube. I'll do it properly. It's like I brought Premiere. And, um, I did my first video. Unlisted. It's so fucking bad. Um, it's from, like, September of last year, so it's not even that old. It's, like, a 30-minute ranking of the Assassin's Creed games. It's like, uh... obviously. <laughs> um, I did that, and, like, that was... I didn't know how to use Premiere, so it was like I was learning as I went. Then I did, there's L.A. Noir is Dripping with Style, of course, uh, some other things. In like January of this year, I thought, right, I'll just do AC, because like, I know that. Like, I know that's a thing people can do, because like, you know, in this community and all that. Yeah. Um, brings us up to now, really. Damn, that's that's already quite a journey. You, this is this is the kind of shit that people want to hear from you as well. I mean, maybe not just yet. Maybe they actually are all subscribed for AC content. But this is what <laughs> I look for when I when I go to YouTube. When I see a new creator, I'm like, I, I like your your tips and tricks video you did on this. But I want to know who you are. Let me know a little bit more about you. This is, it's this a shame so much of it's gone though. Like the Minecraft and Walking Dead stuff is just yeah. gone. See, that's the thing. On on the Combrosations channel, the main one, we we have a ton of my old videos there. And I I, I keep debating every single day to like delete it all because it's probably affecting nah. the channel negatively. But that's the thing, I can't get rid of that, right? It's history. Yeah. In the you fucking did that, um was it Philip DeFranco like Hottie of the Day type thing? Yeah, Hottie of the Month, that, that was is. the shit. <laughs> that is classic. There's no way um, you can take that day. It's, it's too it's too much of a, a historical landmark in my in my time on YouTube to to, to get rid of it, you know. Mm. Oh god. Anyway, um, our next question is from uh, Aiden Robertson. He goes, "Hey, Big Walshy on the podcast. Question for you, mate. What are your top five games of all time?" Sheps and Eddie, you can also answer if you want. Well, Sheps isn't really a gamer. That's why he's left. Um, <laughs> And, you know, he plays inverted, so he's probably all just going to be, like, flight simulators and shit like that. Uh, but what's your top fi top favourite games? Uh, number one, you know, Assassin's Creed 2, 
there there we there's go. the Oblivion there we for go. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Who's probably Red Dead 2? And like, my top two are solid. They probably won't change for years. Mm -hmm. Three is probably like Mario Galaxy 2. Nice. Uh, Sonic Unleashed. And uh, five, probably The Last of Us 1. I reckon. What about you? Damn, I was gonna. You didn't even mention God of War. Wow. Nah, I'll be honest. You think God of War is a little bit overrated? This is the last time you're ever gonna talk to me ever again. <laughs> this is you're not just you're, not just game. that you're gonna come on the podcast. Your last time you're ever coming on the uh, ever talking to me. Full stop. I'm actually ba gonna ban you from the Discord server right now. One second. Let me get to you. There's Walshy right there. Banned listen, permanently. Listen, <laughs> it's good. It's really good. 10 out of 10. Ah, come on. Mate, so that, that was going to be... So, my... I said this before, and I didn't say this lightly. I did think about it. It was a... We had a good discussion about it, and I said... God of War... I think it's actually my favourite game... Ever ever like i the way the things that i felt in that were really really good and it was really pure and game mechanics were great the locations were great it looked beautiful x y and z and honestly i feel sorry for cory because the the sequel probably is not going to be able to live up to it in my mind at least and whatnot yeah. but he is very talented so I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna play the shit out of whatever next game he comes up with um that would be my number one. Number two, I think it would be Last of Us 1. Number three... <clears throat> shit. Probably something nostalgic like a... <clears throat> like a Simpsons Hit and Run. That was yeah. a really good game. Uh, four... This is on the spot now. I'm being put on the spot just here. Uh, I used to play a game called... Uh, it was... It was called Die Hard with a Vengeance, but it was it was based on the the Die Hard movie. Sorry, Die Hard trilogy it was called, but it was yeah. based on the Die Hard movie, the first one. It was so shitty. Like if you used to look up gameplay, you'd be like, "My God, that looks terrible." It was a PS One yeah. game, so you know it was it was always going to be terrible. And and it's got to be something like Pokemon Red, Pokemon Red mm. back in the day. That's 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 another great. Oh God, that makes me think about the old days. Jesus Christ, that's great. Oh shit! We didn't uh, we didn't talk about this. I mean, you probably do you know about Pokemon Snap? Ah, oh, see, I used to play Pokemon a fair bit, and like I, I bought um, it's Go Pikachu and that come out. Yeah, like, I haven't really been following it that much to be honest. So back in the day on the Nintendo sixty four, there used to be a game called Pokemon Snap. Now, you know when you have the main game of a yeah. of a franchise, and then you have all these side games that people don't really care about. That's what Pokemon Snap was, if I'm talking brutally Ooh. honest. But I love the fuck out of this game. It was just all you did, you sat in a little car and the car would move slowly through a world of like a an island with Pokemon on, and you took mm -hmm. pictures of Pokemon. That was all you fucking did. You just took pictures of Pokemon. How much how much a Nintendo selling that for? Mate, back in the day, they were selling at full price. That was whatever the prices were back in the day, which uh, they yeah. don't drop the prices. Or anything. They were selling at full fucking price. And I loved every minute of it. Now, <clears throat> they've remade it. And they're going to be... I don't know if it's a remake or if it's a reboot. I think it might be a reboot. But they're making it again for the Nintendo Switch. And I have to buy the fucking game. It's such a pointless game of just taking pictures of Pokemon. But I want to play it. I want to play it so bad. Yeah, they just yeah. announced that recently. So yeah, fucking hell, Pokemon Snap. That's a that's a memory right there. Um, <clears throat> thanks for Aiden for that. Let's answer the next question. We've got a few more left to burn through here. Um, your name for Anime Club, which is Zahir. He says, "Can't believe you got the YouTuber that's drowning in style to join the podcast." I wanted to ask a favor from Morshi. Please educate yeah. these boomers on the magnificence of Persona. Thanks. Oh, right. I'm not an anime person. Right? Good man, good man. That's a good, that's start, a good start. Good conversation. Yeah. Zona 5, brilliant. Like, Zona 5, I reckon, is one of the best games on the PS4. It's like, Jeez. it's the type of game 
it's got like so much character and charm like it's not just that it's not like you know, style over substance because the story's really good characters are really interesting it's like one of the most charming games i've ever played so like characterful and it's the, the soundtrack is so good like it's really cheap now like cx or something it, it's a big like time dump it's a really long game I recommend like giving it a go at some point for sure see this is the <clears throat> this is the conundrum i'm in at the moment is that walshi a man who i respect uh and wish to steal all of his subscribers and and all that all that stuff right there cool all around cool guy says that persona is great and then we have zaheer on the other side well-known fake gamer and someone who doesn't really understand what games are and doesn't really have a good taste in general has bad takes as well, very like Georgia level takes. Um, oh, cool. Can't be that bad. No, he's he's quite bad. He's quite bad. I mean, even his name, your name for Anime Club. First of all, Anime Club, one of the worst shows we've ever done. One of the worst shows we've ever done. So let's be honest. Let's be honest. No, fuck you. <laughs> Sheps is gonna beat the shit out of me when he hears that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. So we've got two. We've got two sides there. We've got a person who who raves about it and says that it's great, and someone who I respect. And then there's Zaheer over here saying the opposite. So he's saying the same thing. So I'd, I I don't I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe. Mm. Anyway, let's move on to Doctor Sicarius. He says, "What do you guys think about Crash Bandicoot Four? So yeah, that got announced recently. You're yes. a Crash Bandicoot fan. How do you feel? I'm so hyped. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I think. I think. Has a chance. Game of the year. Me. For, for you or in general? Not in general. Fuck no. But like for I me. I was going to say. Shit man. That's a claim right there. <laughs> Ooh, listen. Crash Bandicoot hasn't got like a 3D game like over a, a decade i think mind over mutant was like the last one like 2010 mm. like thing is like the modern era um activision are quite good at making stages they did a new stage for insane trilogy for like crash 3 it was sick okay like a new crash game 2020 like a numbered title it's, it's gonna be so good i can't wait I think people are going to be quite excited for that game. I'm not the the. I mean, I I love I love the um, the insane trilogy that I uh, that I bought for PlayStation Four when they remastered it and whatnot. And I played that all again. And I was like, yeah, this brings back good memories, good memories. Beat that, and I was like, great. <clears throat> but to be honest, I didn't feel like. I didn't feel like shit. You know what? I wish I could do with another Crash game. I don't know. Maybe mm. my brain just didn't turn on to it, and I just kept thinking about other new games that are coming out. But yeah, that's that's exactly how I felt about that. I'm yeah, glad you're I, excited for it. Glad you're excited. I'm quite big on like platformers, and like mm. I think Crash, in terms of, like a batting average, I think Crash, maybe not as good as Mario, but like I reckon it's probably the second best big like platformer series, like on average, I suppose. Yeah, I think it'd be quite good. Um, <clears throat> our next question is uh, is well, our, our response I should say is from uh. uh Nos Jota, which who is Vito in our in our chat over here, He's, it's a response to one of our questions before. Who was it? Oh, it was Uncle Noli. It was Hamid, who said, um, "Walshi, since your channel has passed Conversations channel in subs, what are your tips? Uh, what are the tips you would give to Eddie and Sheps to boost their channel? Love you guys." And he responds to him saying, "It's easy. Just make laser style AC videos, but with a higher a higher degree of quality." Oh well, that's that's okay then. That's because. Uh. The barrier, the barrier right there is pretty low, pretty low. Then that's, that's oh that's come on, it, no, they I like that. I used to binge those back in the day. What does like lasers they're... actually do? Like, what good content has he actually done, ever, ever really? I've right? seen a wire hidden blade so cool. Is the best video of all time. The problem is, is it's the subject matter. It's Assassin's Creed. I'm just fucking with you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like when Sheps talks about anime. There's only a certain level of coolness it can get to, you know. I mean, if you're talking about good stuff, cool, great. But no, no, I'm messing. I'm messing around. Mm. I'm messing around. Uh, I <laughs> I can understand how the AC videos, especially from James, because yeah. James has his, his quality is fucking insane. It's it's yeah, actually yeah, yeah. intimidating sometimes. I've mm. I've been sitting on for ages a. Um, 
<clears throat> it's almost like a retrospective video. I saw James one time and I, I, I got the feeling to do a retrospective video on The Order 1886. Yeah. <clears throat> I wrote out the intro. I wrote out a good portion of like the next para uh, couple paragraphs. And I just don't ever feel like I can get up to the standard of James, you know? So I'm like, fuck. If I just put this yeah. out, it's just going to suck in comparison. What the fuck am I supposed to do? It's a, it's a high bar though, and I think it's with content. You'll know this, where it's like you just have to sort of throw yourself at it, like yeah. go and improve from there. Like, I reckon you could. You haven't really done anything like retrospective, like have you before? No, no. I mean, I don't. I don't even like know what to do like that. You know, I don't. It's not. It's. It's never been in my wheelhouse. I've never had a. I mean, I do think I have the capability to do it. It's just. I've never been able to, you know? I mean, I've, I've never known where to start. I've never known how to structure those kind of videos. So yeah. if I do this and then it turns out I'm terrible at it, then then I guess I'll just turn away, turn off YouTube, cancel the channel and stuff like that, you know, general stuff like that. And the um, is, <laughs> like, To do one to, like, the quality of, like, James is what you want or, like, Ethan's massive Mass Effect one, obviously that'll take a bit, but, like, just to get your foot in the door... Just give it a go. Yeah. But just to make something that's at least okay, I don't think it will be that hard, especially when, like, you're already acquainted with, like, your software. The only thing you'd have to do mainly that would be, like, new to you, I suppose, is writing a script, perhaps? Mm. See, I used to write scripts for the Inside Eddie show, but that was <laughs> comedy, so it wasn't it wasn't the same thing. I, I'm going to inject, obviously, a little bit of comedy in whatever I do, because that's just the, fu the fucking way I am. I, I, love, I love to make people laugh. Um, I don't know if I can make people laugh, but I like to try at least. Anyway, that's yeah. this one right there. Um, but I'll I'll see what people think if anyone's at all interested. And I also it's also another time thing as well. I've I've have a, I've always had projects that I start and then I'm like fuck I have to go to work I've got real life stuff to worry about then Diogo fucks up a live stream whatever he does and and then and then Ethan calls me up and he's like Eddie you're the best guy I know can you help me out with something and I'm like sure I'll go help you out and then Tyler goes along and it's like I need relationship advice and and also yeah. uh, how to stay fit in the gym and stuff like that you know because Tyler yeah, comes when, to me for that stuff when you're the backbone of the community you've you've not really got time for like you know this like small fry shit do you exactly exactly yeah. so really that's the reason why you're not getting the amazing content from me is that i'm supporting every other member of our community that's what i'm that's what right. i'm doing right here oh glad someone recognizes it or she glad someone recognizes it um our next question is from nirok he says walshi how do you feel about the big influx of subs you've been getting recently also congratulations dude weird to think that you were less than 1k not long ago uh also, what do you guys think of the Avengers game coming up? We did speak about that, but how do you feel, bro? How do you feel? Ah, uh, oh, just lucky to be honest, because like it's weird at times, because it's like this is something like a few years ago, it, YouTube's what I've always wanted to do to an extent even before I've done it. Like, it'd be mad me. I mean, a few years ago, like a few months ago, to like not to like to my ego or anything, but to like see where I'm at now, sort of thing. It's, just feel really lucky to like had something there was an opportunity there with like assassin's creed being as open as it was but well, i'm just lucky really to be honest mm. that is it must have you must have hit at the right time and also with like the right tags and everything must have just the stars must have just aligned at the right moment and it was obviously yeah. something that you or you're passionate about something you have a, not a, a lot of knowledge about so fucking you, you're really congratulations to you man honestly from the bottom of my heart it's, it's, it's fucking fantastic you you got a really good one here and also you just happen to be really talented as well so that's that's another oh, thing, oh right? stuff it you hey eh? all right we're gonna <laughs> after this we'll we'll, we'll we'll kiss and everything don't worry about it. We'll, we'll make you guys <laughs> I was a little bit of flirting with you there. That's what I was doing. <laughs> um, our next question is from Super Bleach. So he goes, "What do you guys think about the Cyberpunk delay? And what do you uh, what do you think is wrong with the game that it had to be delayed twice? Also, do you think they'll fix the problems before launch, or do you think that the game will have problems? So it will have problems with the game." 
So this is actually something quite interesting. I had a, a theory after list, after reading Super, Super Bleach's uh, comment just there that maybe there is something like genuinely wrong with Cyberpunk. Maybe they bit off too much than they that they can chew. Maybe the, the scope of the game is just too big for them to to you know run, make run properly because GTA, yeah. for example, it's amazing how that thing runs. As smooth as it does with a, a massive world that you can just drive anywhere there mm. is a very big loading screen when you get into gta but after that yeah. there's no more loading or anything like that and it's amazing you don't just you know explode so i do you reckon cyberpunk is just like too big and they're like oh fuck we need to delay this another another three months and then delay uh, uh, another three months another three months. Uh, you know one more time one more time one more time see like i wouldn't have been surprised I would guess the reason it's delayed is because of the scope. Because I think CD Projekt Red are going to put something out just as like, oh, you know, this will make a bit of money. I think they're genuinely quite passionate and like want to make something groundbreaking. And I think whatever issues there were or whatever they're like amending, we don't think they'll be there on launch. Like, I think they know what they're doing. And I, I would never see CD Projekt Red releasing something that's unfinished. You know, that's a bit weird to me. Yeah. I think. The lanes on the whole, as frustrating as they are, are a good thing, like, in the long term, you know? So I don't, I don't mind this too much. Yeah, I, uh, that's another thing people keep saying, like, oh, uh, it, they're delaying the game and that's that can only be a good thing and whatnot, so mm. you're going to get a better game in, in return, so everyone should just be happy and just be patient. I'm like, cool, that's, that's 100% fine. Mm. Don't, make the best game possible. The delay doesn't necessarily mean that they'll have everything fixed, whatever they're delaying the game for. But I, mm. you know, I, I still have faith. I still have faith. Like, like The Last of Us, Naughty Dog had never st stirred me wrong before, so I'm, I'm completely fine with holding on and giving them the benefit of the doubt. Same with CD Projekt Red. They haven't, they haven't stirred me in the wrong direction before. I'm gonna assume that everything is okay that they just needed a bit more time for polish uh, a bit of that yeah. polish polish get it huh? polish polish <laughs> yes that's so funny this is the this is the shit you guys subscribe for guys this is shit you guys subscribe for um a bit of that polish polish right there to to make the game great there was an investor call recently where they said the game is actually finished but they're just uh, working on bugs where like NPCs might walk through say like a lamppost or something like that things that just yeah. aren't supposed to happen and I'm like well, at least the game's finished. That's pretty fucking cool. That's yeah, pretty fucking yeah, cool, right? Sure. There. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's everything. Did you have anything else you wanted to wanted to bring up about Cyberpunk? Anything at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Nightmare Fuel with a PH. I love that name because I get to say PH. Uh, what's your favorite combat in a video game? Do you have any favorite Ooh. combat games or games with combat? Uh, Assassin. Trying. I'm trying really hard to think of something that isn't Assassin's Creed. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know what? what? Assassin's Creed 2. Great, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I think it's probably not my favourite. I think the gunplay, as much as I don't really enjoy the game very much, I think the gunplay in Mafia 3 is really Ooh. good. Right? Like the weight it has and the animations are all really nice. I, I like that a lot. That's a really good point right there. Really good. Okay, all right. I feel you, I feel you. Uh, fucking hell, right now, everybody in Discord is spamming. Uh, Eddie, finish uh, The Last of Us. Finish The Last of Us. Jesus, Eddie, True. finish The Last of Us. And, um, yeah, okay, that needs to happen soon. I think I'm, like, one stream away from finishing it. That's why everyone's oh, really, shit. really hyped about it. Um, the, the favorite combat for me, favorite <clears> combat... <throat> Do you know what? Some people aren't a big fan of like QTEs and stuff like that, and to a certain extent, I'm not either. But mm. sometimes it can be nice as long as the game isn't filled with quick time events and you know, just hit a button yeah. and it does all the. But every now and again, that can be fun. So, uh, I I mentioned the Order eighteen eighty six. The Order eighteen eighty six has uh, a lot of like quick time events when it comes to combat, but that's because mm. they tried to make it really cinematic and yeah. When it's really cinematic, then they get to sort of choreograph the fight scenes as well. 
And there are some cool scenes where, like, you're shooting at something and then it comes lunging at you and you've got to press square and you do a dodge and then you do a stab mm. and then you could do some more shooting and stuff like that. I think the combat in that is quite cool. I, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. It's not my favorite, though, but it, it's quite yeah. cool. I think I'll leave that one. Um... Uh, da, 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 what else is here? Oh shit! Vito's written in a bunch of things. He's talking about how like you're you're growing so fast, lad. Watch him. Uh, <laughs> started watching him around April and February and stuff like that. He's saying he's gotten so much better. And it, and you're not just the lasers clone, which is a good thing. He's saying that's so proud of you. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> what a good what a good guy. And also he sent you um he sent this picture. I'm gonna put it in our chat so you can see what it what it is. Uh, that look familiar to you? Oh, it. oh that's great. That I <laughs> that should just be the thumbnail. <laughs> Nothing. At, yeah. When Thanks, um, mate, when when George came on the podcast, I picked the oldest photo that I could find of him, and it was a photo of him back in the day when he did the yeah, ice bucket there. challenge. And he looks <laughs> like he looks like a young Michael McIntyre. The guy's like chubby and everything. Yeah. I'm like, that was so fucking yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and uh, he, he was like, I love how you used that picture to, to promote the show. And I was like, well, you know, I've got to give an accurate representation of you, you know. Um, okay, we've got two more questions here. Very quick ones. Katzper says, ask Walshy, uh, what does he think of Johnny O'Johnny? And why he sucks at AC4 multi. Who's Johnny O'Johnny? Okay, so... Two weeks ago, um, Spurt invited me and Mario on to do like uh, an AC4 multiplayer stream. Okay. Like, it fucked up, like the audio, fucked up totally. But um, yeah, so we did that. And we went into this game mode, and there was this bloke called Johnny O Johnny One. Uh, he doesn't understand the tenets of the Assassin's Creed. Completely broke our role play, and. Um, yeah, fuck Johnny oh Johnny. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's who Johnny oh Johnny is. Uh, the last question. Let me just pop that one up. It is from Summer Dylan. <laughs> and this is a good one now that I know what it yeah. is. He goes, what the fuck is Marky 1989? <laughs> Who knows? Mate, Dylan, no one understands. The... Hey, yeah, Dylan, he's done this just to fucking torment me. He knows what it is. He's in, like, the Google Doc screenplay for the sequel. Like, yeah. He knows what it is. <laughs> oh, God. That, I swear to God, this is going to be... This is the most fucked up thing. And the thing is, usually on the Conversations podcast, we find the most fucked up stuff to talk about. We might have mm -hmm. to bring this up on the uh, on the podcast just because just because it came up here. We, this is usually yeah. the shit we talk about. Yeah. Anyway, that is everything that we have to talk about on the uh, on the show today, bro. Thanks a lot for swinging by. It was like a meaty two-hour podcast, right? Yeah, thanks for having me on. This is pretty sick. No, this is pretty cool. This was actually this was you said that this was your first podcast that you've ever like been on, right? Yeah, yeah. Episode nine of the the True Game. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you're gonna be able to tell everyone. So, like in the future, obviously, when you're asking for like codes for games like ac valhalla yeah. and stuff like, that. like I, I was on the true gamer podcast yeah you know when like spotify have like bought you exclusively for like 10 yes. million dollars yes. yeah that'll that be a big flex that exactly exactly i was on episode nine of the true game podcast the true gamer podcast <laughs> um and that means I'm a true gamer, so there you go. There you go. So you mm. should know that um, we only ever get true gamers on this podcast. We haven't had James and Tyler specifically because they're not true gamers. Exactly. You, you have you, George, didn't you? George, he's a he's a true gamer. Guy plays Doom Eternal. Of course, he's a true <laughs> gamer right there. And uh, we've had Ethan on here. He's a he, he plays uh, AC Unity, so you know he's a <laughs> he's a true gamer right yeah, there. The most underrated game of all time. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. But those other fuckers over there those talentless hacks just <laughs> anyway thanks for joining us bro um <clears throat> yeah and i'll say thanks on behalf of sheps as well who had to dip out quite quite quickly <laughs> just there yeah. but um yeah we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come down here and, uh, and talk to us about games oh, no worries. Stuff, thanks for having me on it's been it's been an honor it's been pretty yeah. insane, yeah. like. As Shep said in the chat as well, he just he got back and wrote a quick message. Hopefully, we can get you back uh, later 
after AC Valhalla, maybe for like a proper jam, yeah. so you can get pick your brain about that. Uh, yeah, one of yeah, the yeah. one of the main people of the Assassin's Creed community right here, uh, the true true gamer right here. All right, um, that's the episode. That's episode nine of the True Gaming Podcast. Everybody, thank you all for tuning in wherever you guys tune in. If you're on podcast services, give us like a five star rating and stuff like that. Apple really likes that kind of stuff. If you're on Spotify as well, same thing. If you're watching on YouTube, likes and shares and everything like that are all appreciated. And uh, feel free to check out our Patreon if you want to help support us for future stuff and whatnot in the comment section. Um, yeah, bro, I'll catch you I'll catch you another time, hopefully in our Discord server, and yeah. if not one time when we see you again on the podcast. How about that? Yeah, oh yeah, that'll be soon. Alright. Alright, man. Uh catch you later. Yes, sir. See ya.